Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another series of the ECL. This is the ECL playoffs and obviously for all of you who not or were not up there when the actual thing was happening, this is an aftercast or so YouTube exclusive. Brought to you by, well, my humble self. My name is MFT. Um, I'm a caster for ESOC, obviously. And now I have the honours. Why? Well, I have the honour to actually be able to cast this amazing series for you. We are talking about Risotto versus Lionheart right now. And uh, it's not the last series, right? The playoffs were finished and we cast the last playoff game that actually had a lot to say in who takes home the crown between this, this final playoff between the semi-FF gang on the one side and the Gajonians on the other side. So obviously, this is the second to last actually playoff series that uh, is going to be uploaded. We have, I think think at least three yep at least three playoff series casted with this one including this one so you are good to go guys and i do not want to bore you with any further shenanigans of myself let's just get started with the first game of the series shall we hop right into the game and the first matchup actually is lionheart with sweden against risotto with his mexicans so i'll quickly update that for you and then let's hop into the first game of this series. Uh, there we go, Sweden. And let's see where this matchup brings us, guys. It is an interesting matchup for sure. Don't forget, this was actually played before the big content update that also brought us the Free Age Vampires version that is around today. So uh, if you don't see all the new skins for H4 units in some of these games, don't get confused. As I said, it is an aftercast after all. And let's get this going, shall we? All right. In the northeastern corner, of course, we've got Risotto with his Mexicans starting there. First map, obviously, is Manchuria. For those of you who don't know all the names by heart, but I guess that's not too many of you, right? <laughs> And in the southwest, we've got, of course, the Sweden, uh, the Swedish player with Lionheart. Both of those players, interesting play styles, I would argue. Um, Lionheart especially is known for a lot of <laughs> strategies that some would consider questionable, I guess. Especially rather um, ace-like clusterfuck <laughs> strategies that, that tend to expand what we perceive as, as being possible with different sieves but let's see what he has in store for us with his Sweden uh, with the Sweden gameplay right there and don't forget Manchuria of course a map that is rather complex it has a lot of water with four whales on there we have a lot of livestock usually about 12 of those yaks all over the map and those guys I, I think actually would be of more benefit to to risotto in this in this situation not gonna lie of course Sweden can just put them between the torps, delete them, and the torps are going to all together from their, well, otherwise decaying corpse, I guess. But on the other side, of course, we have Mexico, and we know those guys are prone to start with their first shipment being uh, two settlers and a Hacienda wagon for basically almost any purposes, right? So you always get that free, uh, that free fattening building that basically just feeds up those yaks a lot faster. And also, the yaks that are tasked to those ascenders of course generate resources so that again benefits the maximum player at least in my opinion a bit more than the swedish player on the other side also um not let's not stop there another specific map specific feature that we have is of course the trade line which is actually not always the same it can also spawn in a sort of connecting line from one side of the map to the other but here in this situation we have a safe backward spawn which usually Caesars, or it would usually sees players going for early CP into stagecoach, making sure that they have this early economic benefit that most of the time the enemy is going to get as well. So you better get it too, right? Otherwise, you're going to start off way behind with two of those things running all the time. Yucks going up here. How many do we have for results so far? Check six. That is a great number there. Lionheart on the other side. Uh, he is not eating them yet, of course. Did he find any at all? Or am I just being blind over here? Might actually be the T as I mean he found one, I know that, but 
seems like it might have been taken from him. Oh, and we see an aggressive, or at least seems to be aggressive, forward sender coming in from his auto, getting immediately scouted by the Swedish <laughs> Shake 2020. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, we all know who that is aimed at, but <laughs> don't take it in a bad spirit, Shake. <laughs> um... Of course, that guy was busy just hunting the treasure over here, but now he also knows, okay, something is probably going to happen here. Let's, let's call it that. Just because a forward ascender, of course, can also be used as a shipment point. And Risotto also aging up with 14 villages, actually. So a really rather fast age up for Mexico. Should be should have been aged at 240, 245, I reckon. And he actually sends a card in transition. Namely, Cathedral Construction, which, gives you, which, which uh, actually gives you a Cathedral Wagon. And I think... Yeah, no, but it just researches all the technologies that that thing has much faster. And also benefits you by providing a steady 1 XP per second trickle. Which is a bit better, actually, than most churches. So keep that in mind. It is actually worth, or can be worth, sending this. But I think only if you're aging a bit later than Risotto is doing right now. Because, of course, he's going to be up and the shipment's going to be in. And I think he will not be able to send the shipment quickly after that. Depending on how big, of course, the build, ex build XP is. But that's only 80 XP. And we are still 150. Yeah, but... All right. He, of course, has the extra XP from the age up. I keep forgetting about that when I play Mexico. Which, as you might be able to tell, does not happen too often there. Of course, he also ages up with a military wagon, which is a standard thing for Mexico H2 age ups. So that thing is forward as well. Again, reinforcing that notion that we might see an aggressive play here. Village is getting queued, of course, in Sogente. On this patch, still only 70, uh, 65 food, so actually quite doable to start with a full batch of those guys and just put the pressure on Sweden. Sweden, on the other hand, Lionheart has and actually has put down his outputs quite. I don't want to say aggressively, but rather non-defensively, if that makes any sense. Because it's so far away from his TC that he might not be able to protect it with additional TC fire if need be. A risky move in my opinion, but we will see if it pays off for him or for his enemy there. And, oh, poor Shake, Getting caught out by a few peasants with sticks and hoes and whatnot. He's not having a good day there. But, looks like Mexico is, because that extra XP just enabled the second shipment immediately. And there we go. Five villages into 700 wood. We might actually see some water play. Don't forget that uh, Michoacan Fisherman is actually quite a, val a valuable card on water. Monday. Sweden on the other side is looking at... Oh, actually already. 10 torps before 6 minutes. So that is quite strong. I mean, Zoto I think is a, a Sweden main or at least very much a Sweden enjoyer and on those coin mines, those backward safe coin mines of course, uh, four torps are gonna get there for quite some time. We see the Carolines zoning in, trying to get a, a good angle here to actually hinder those Insurgentes from burning down the Swedish housing space here. And that thorn is actually a, good, a decent unit to deal with them. Sounds weird, but Carolines have those juicy juicy 20 attack and melee, which is much stronger than most musketeers. Most Standard musketeers, at least. And also more than enough to actually deal with those insurgentes in melee. But there are the reinforcing Salteadores, H2 Skirm, that also, don't forget about that, keep a lot of line of sight uh, because the enemies they shoot it for a short period of time at least, reveal themselves to them and therefore uh, make scouting a bit easier. Is it now coming up with the yeah, barracks over here, more housing space, yeah, and he is now with the 700 wood, of course, also going for, uh, for the TP line. Line out on the other side, he is sending through, oh, the foundry wagon and the leather cannon, of course, so he wants to dip into that, that juicy, juicy unit combination, that is Caroline's plus artillery foundry, uh, plus um, leather cannon. Let's see if the pop works right for him. Yep, he actually sends it over there and wants to get a shot off on the on the skirms, I think. Which is a good idea, obviously. Yeah, and there we go. First Saltadora gets a shot. The second one might also... No, actually, that doesn't happen. But, of course, with the artillery foundry in place, we don't have any, um, any cards that benefit the Torps yet, except for the minions, of course, buffing the HP and also enabling them to, to gather crates and all that stuff. 
But it is going to be hard for Rizotto to actually feel a lot of those guys because they're just so hellish expensive in H1 to build like that. If you have none upgraded torps, of course, there's maybe 150 torp population. He is torping like crazy and he knows all the gold mines. And that is just what's so great about this series here, or the, the entire format, in my opinion. Because for this, for this tournament, um, even though there was no prize pool on it, <laughs> a lot of guys went pretty try hard. <laughs> if that makes any sense to you because obviously you have to know that there's all the comments over there they're there and all those yucks they're all they all have been gathered up right there's no question now whether or not you want to get them of course every single player here in the series gets his yucks ah closely just closely missing a batch there of another cannon and honestly I mean, the, the Saltis are a decent enough counter, of course, to the, to the Korean Mars here, but as the number of leather cannons increases, it's going to be harder and harder, ever so harder, with each single cannon that comes in to actually fight this for Risotto. Just because, well, leather cannons are actually very efficient against light infantry, if the Mars is right, of course. And don't forget, they're also very, num uh, very fast for... Um, mixture unit of, of an artillery unit that's also supposed to be a skirm i will see how they fare in this situation and i don't think actually that risotto is in a position yeah he is actually aging behind this with tabasco so uh interesting agent honestly i think it gives him also one of those those um units move faster or produce faster or gather faster cards but we will see in a second and that Hacienda means that the forward shipment point, of course, is gone. And Rizotto just does not have the skirm mask to even sh shoot one of those. Um, kill a single leather cannon there. And I think his entire front phase is, is about to be gone here. Fake <laughs> doing his best or her best. Oh yeah, that's the Feeble Explorer, right? Uh, he's doing her best to, to get as much damage in here as he can. But look at that. 150 torque population still. I mean... Maybe Line is a bit over committing here on, on means. Yeah, he just actually stopped the shipment of the three hosts and goes into Engelsberg Ironworks before that, which I fancy is the better move here because he just basically destroyed the entire front base of his Mexican opponent. And although Mexico is now, of course, in H3 and building units, we are. It, it kind of enables him to uh, slow down Mexico's aggression just because Mexico, if they wanted to push here, had to cover a lot more ground. But of course, it's Sweden now who's on the front uh, or on a march forward. And I I don't know if that's a good choice here because now he's more or less suiciding his poor Karelians while there's cannons on the way to actually deal with his leather cannons. Look at that. Oh, but that was a lucky dodge over there. And actually, it's the Falcon S that gets sniped, not the leather cannons. But rather confusing sights here, to be honest. But I think... Yeah, that was not... I, I don't know if that was targeted by, by Rizotto himself or not. But if it wasn't, then it was a lucky shot after all. Leather cannon mass is considerably diminished here. And Risotto with the score did, actually. I think we now see blueberries as well. So uh, the full horror that is the top economy is about to kick in. The Swedish economic wonder uh, is soon going to happen. And he's actually muckering. I, I don't know if you can call this macro um, with, with zero settlers in coin, but he's still producing an awful amount of coin there. <laughs> but still, Lionheart is just stacking resources, trying, yep, yeah, now he's sold some food to actually get to the age up. And with blueberries in mind, of course, yeah, his economic numbers, those are going to skyrocket in a second or so. Look at that. That's almost, but yeah, almost 2,000 resources per second. And that's. That is what Risotto can offer on the other side, right? <laughs> so quite the considerable difference there. I don't know what that settler of Lionheart was doing over there. Probably just looking for another mine to talk or something. But yeah, Risotto on the other side is making, at least to me, I mean, I'm sitting on the high horse of the caster, right? So if you're looking at this and not playing, you can always say something that sounds smarter than it actually is. But in this situation, of course, you might actually forget, but... Risotto has been idle with this settler production for some time. 33 settlers versus 29. And that is not including torps. So um, we might actually see a, a fast industrial fall, okay? <laughs> Sweden, one bad thing right now for them is actually that they do not have a shipment ready. 
Also, not enough wood to actually upgrade the units there on the field right now. I think that's a bit of an oversight here, maybe. Because it, um, if there is a big engagement about to happen here, this is all H2. That's all H2 units versus uh, upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. Yeah, all H3. And I think, especially with that Goon Master, in theory, Risotto actually would have been able to fight this. Take out the Leather Cannons and then let the Saltus do the work. Because those guys are also extremely fast. 4 to 5, 4 to 5. They can kite the Carolines. Um, I don't really know if that was the right choice there, not to engage. And yeah, Shake is just not in a good spot. He's getting another hit in. <laughs> yeah, but actually, he's also doing a decent job, but trying at least to keep down the top numbers. But I think at this point, he might be in a spot where it's, just, it doesn't, it's not that impactful anymore. Because even if he gets those three down, we're still at 150 full population and look at that Lionheart actually putting in a melee mode to protect his leather cannons but now I think that's that's not the spot where he wants to be and all those Carolines are going to die a painful death against the skirmishes and the goons now also getting their shots in villages have to be evacuated that is a massive massive economic uh, idle time here and those guys might might be able to flee the scene but at what cost honestly look at the score 5k score difference and that's with the 160 population still and there we see it Lionheart actually cheekily going for the engineer for the age four without even having age three upgrades on his units so um he doesn't care he doesn't need bills he just takes his torps and runs right <laughs> let's see if he can actually turn this around but i'm I mean, the Engineer, of course, is two Falconets, which can be quite useful in this situation, but I don't know if the Falconets are going to be here in time to save them. Because first Vex is going to go down, and he, he can't really fight this. Midmen also being called a bit ahead of their time, but of course, I guess he wanted to protect his villages down here. But at the same time, I mean, his base is in Rebels, right? There's, there's, it's being torn apart, and even now, we'll see the, the cannons spawn up here yep those goons will be able to melee them to death without an issue look at that really smart uh really smart of risotto here to pay attention puts them actually to melee maybe try to move a bit closer here but yeah the first falcon head does not even get a shot at and we see two heavies coming still so lionheart is trying to hold on but there's nothing literally nothing to protect those heavies once they come in and there's still one falcon in the field so I kind of question how, if there's any way for, for uh, Lionheart to come back into this. I mean, look at this. H4, well, almost double the score for Mexico in this situation. That was a wild ride here, and although I was not too sure of, of Risotto's plan here in the start, I think that Lion maybe was a bit, maybe a bit too careless in his H2 transition to H3. Should have probably upped his units, should have probably also have gone for, for his uh, upgrades. And there comes the GG for the first game of the series. I hope you guys are entertained. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a nice series to start off and also know that there's this, this friendly competition between the two players going right. So I can absolutely understand why they why they absolutely why they were really happy with this series after all. I mean look at this units kill, that speaks quite that, that is quite... Um, I don't need to explain this, to be honest. <laughs> 60 to 98 units lost. That is just devastating, even to a civilization with an economy like Sweden, with almost full talk boom. Villager, yeah, we see the slaughter begins over here. And also, Mexico has never really touched. Military population, yeah. That's the point where I think Lionheart should not have pushed, but he was caught out and had to face a fully upgraded army of mexico and that just yeah it was not the right place for lionheart to, to push in there i reckon but let's not talk too much about it because we've got six more games ahead of us don't forget this is just like the rest of this tournament uh event basically not uh best of seven but rather a series of seven so we have to cast all seven games here because they all happened so let's see what the next one got in store for us shall we All right, I'm going to quickly load into the next one.
And, ooh, the matchup is interesting already. Um, don't forget also, this is not the patch with a broken with the broken Freemason card, and is also not the uh, the patch where USA was overly buffed, because that is at least the impression right now as I'm casting, right? But we've got, on Central Plane, Risotto versus Lionheart, Risotto with the USA, and Lionheart with the Ottoman. And we all know that Lionheart is always having fun with his Ottoman. I don't know too much about Risotto's USA, but we will hopefully see something fantastic out of those two players. So, let's get those Sith Pigs updated and see how they fare. All right. Actually, funnily enough, the spawns are basically the same as they were in the first game. So northeast, we see the USA played by Risotto, and then the northwest, southwest, sorry, there we go. Uh, we, of course, see the Ottoman played by Leinhardt himself. And if I think, just to give you a prediction, I haven't seen those games before, obviously, uh, but just to give you a prediction of what I assume might happen. When I see Leinhardt play the Ottoman, I always immediately think of, of Umbarachi, <laughs> of the, because he tried to make them work for a long time in a 1v1 situation. And against USA, honestly, that extra siege potential might be good but on the other side of course on this map usa with their hardcore trickle build orders like the bank wagon and all that coming in especially the chinese explorers as well i think that can be quite valid over here and just a little map detail here if you build one of those two tps up here usually you are actually able to get the very first pass as we will just see here for for lionheart and don't forget, that's 81 XP. So that is immediately or almost immediately going to give you the XP that you want to get the next shipment. Usually, for most saves without any extra XP income or any cheaper or more expensive shipments, right? Without any extra XP on any buildings, any fights with treasure hunters and so on, uh, with, with treasure guardians, you will get a new shipment at 150 to 2 minutes. And here we are up at 130 for Lionheart, which is actually quite quite useful here he is starting with two tps makes a lot of sense because he probably yeah just as i predicted saw that there is chinese immigrants in the deck of the usa player meaning that he can just get those guys out and also spawn another one of those yep there we go another tp wagon as soon as possible so that's basically before three minutes the entire trade line taken <laughs> just to uh, give that a bit perspective here why is that so good with usa because they have a lot of cards that can be transferred into those extra economic trickles right we are probably going to see i think the philadelphia age up is the one that i'm talking hi shit is sg oh god <laughs> so I, I, we're probably going to see sharpshooters then or also interesting ah oh, scottish immigrants that, that's also a beautiful one he is going for capitalism because he can just afford with his XP trickle here. I mean, that's three TPs as I just mentioned. He can just afford to, to put mercantilism in there. And maybe even get a third shipment in the meantime because his XP curve is going to be through the roof. On the other side, we've of course got some mercantilism built here. So no house, no extra gathering, any wood so far for the Ottoman player. And that means he's aging up with the quartermaster for that extra wood that he actually needs. But it enables him to go up much, much faster than I think any other Sith really that does not have a fast age up. And the yeah, age up is now in queue for USA as well. And Pennsylvania, I'm sorry. I was sure it was something with a P. <laughs> but yeah, Pennsylvania, because of the Pennsylvania Convention, if I'm not mistaken there, that gives you a meeting house with special upgrades for USA. And uh, a lot of those can be really useful especially in the early game because they just give you a lot of trickles and different dynamics and also access to sharpshooters and dragoons in age 2 which for usa can be fairly useful depending on what the enemy is doing to to actively well kill you i guess 400 wood on the ground of course for ottoman age of time with 350 nice for him immediately he's going to go for 700 coins so I think with that coin, yeah, we are going to see an FF here. Interesting build order. 
One thing I don't like is that, of course, he has been vilied for some time now. He needs to build a house as soon as possible to, to get the next one out. And where was it built, actually? Oh, over there. Never mind. That's a good spot, actually, for to spot raids coming in or any shenanigans like that. Risotto on the other side, still aging up, of course, sending the bank wagon in the meantime. And you might wonder, hmm, again, USA not really having enough XP to send another... Uh, another shipment right after the age but of course guys you know how it works with those new sieves mexico usa there is xp on the ground and rather more than you need actually to get the shipment up and the bank itself is also going to do the rest philadelphia con uh, convention as i said is going to be shipped in it will give you the the meeting house as i said pennsylvania pound is the coin trickle that slows down your coin gather rate actually in all your bills but it was already up again by the bank so it kind of balances each other out and the trickle itself is quite uh quite considerable to be honest i think it's like 2.5 or something but we were going to look that up in a second and of course you get access to the sharpshooters and the pennsylvania cavalry so uh, a lot of those things and you actually in theory can build another uh, another philadelphia convention another um what's it called meeting house so to even further improve <laughs> oh my god are we actually yeah we are seeing a saloon build from risotto over there so you remember when i said that lionheart is the one that is known for his ingenious threats sometimes uh, i think risotto is actually playing his cards really well that is an annoying start to deal with lionheart of course is already aging with the marksman so he's going to get some abus out i think six abus gunners are going to spawn out of that tc if i'm not mistaken they're not six but more hmm four i the problem is i'm always confusing the shipment yep and the ones that come out of the tc with that age up but we're going to see soon enough he is now putting some houses down also got a, a barracks right there gens are being fielded there but on the other side of course we've got cowboys interestingly just the second most broken the goon unit or the second dragoon unit in the u.s american roster that used to be broken and in comparison to Carbine Kev, now it looks it looks a lot a lot tamer. Oh, oh look at that Scottish immigrant is coming up, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight. Saloon, meeting house, trading post. Yeah, <laughs> so that's going to be eight or seven, um, if I'm not mistaken, for Eastland. So yeah, then it's it's uh, enough that they. Uh, this is not going to go up in time, though, I think. This is not going to go up in time. I'm sorry, my friend, but that is not going to affect uh, your unit numbers. But look at that. We've got those Abus Gunners, right? Four. So I got that right, at least. We've got the Dragoon Mars. And we've got a Falconet on the way. I don't know if if Rizzotto is going to do a lot of damage with his Musketeers. I mean, his Musketeers are going to be on steroids, right? They, they are going to have, like, 300 HP or something. But at the same time, it's heavy infantry against cannons. And I don't really see any unit that actively counters the cannons if Lionheart does not blunder his, his artillery positioning and gives them away for free to those goons in melee or something. Right. But we're actually seeing, we are actually seeing Rizzotto staying in H2, committing there as well, it looks like. And now, of course, Lionheart also knows what's up, right? He knows that there is... Oh, Pennsylvania Pound only now coming in. Bit of a shame. As I said, that thing is a great... Let's just look at his coin income already. It's a 290. So that's about those, those uh, 275 a minute. Yeah, you see that? That's that's a different number now. Far up, that's almost double the number, uh, double the coin income for him without actually being on coin greatly. But of course now, with the coin ground here, and I almost missed the moment that I talked about, the moment where Lionheart almost loses his artillery to um, a, a decent enough attack here, I think, by by Risotto's dragoon mass, and he just needs to get those guys out of the way because every shot taken at that. He's going to diminish. Oh, like that hurts, man. That hurts so bad. That's another one down. That's oh, a lot of value, a lot of investment also because he had to build all those TPs first, right? 
and that's two of his most essential units in this situation already gone. I don't know if I like that very much. Oh, that's a nice take by Lionheart. Of course, if he has his army there, he can just take that free settler. But Risotto actually, after this, not engaging any further. He is aging up himself now. And, of course, with the Virginia General Assembly. Now, that might won't be in in time, but it will still offer uh, a decent decent age-up time reduction on the one side. And on, oh, 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 Lionheart. Ah, could have taken the shot there, I think. Could have done some extra damage. And now, of course, he's suffering. Oh, my God. I did not know that those things... That thing was uh, so was really damaged already. But all right, don't mind me. He's now, of course, taking down U.S. houses. Why? Because the housing market needs to be in shambles. Uh, of course not. But rather because he does not want to see himself faced with three Gatling cannons or Gatling guns on the other side of the U.S. player. And uh, it's not going to happen. At least not like that. Emergency house is being put down, emergency stable as well. But the army here, I mean, all those guys are basically just too strong to actually... To just die to this fight. We've got sharpshooters out now, but Risotto is in a complicated spot, to say the least. Does not have a shipment ready. Now he does. He is sending through... He needs to send something through quickly, otherwise this is going to be even the worst spot for him. Yeah, and we see Kentucky... Oh no. Nine sharpshooters. Yeah, that's a good card, but he could have waited until he was 15. Harbour and Kev is also coming out. Needs another house. There it goes. So he is actually going for that infamous skirm gun combo that at least in the last few weeks of actual time we've come to hate so much. Or at least some of us. <laughs> and Lionheart on the other side. Let's, let's check his economy out. He's of course only on 20 villages, but he has another TC. Build it in the meantime. He sent actually a thousand coin and a thousand wood for her. So uh, he should be stacked on resources. And for the fact that he's actively pushing, chose a rather economic way here to fight this. But look at that. Actually, with the reinforcing sharpshooters, the heavy infantry got almost cleaned. And now there's not too much to clean out those carbine cav that came out. Although it's also not too many carbine cav units that are on the field now. I'm not a huge fan of how this was managed. Oh! But of course, I forgot we have the Cowboys there as well. And we are seeing more and more peaks from the Sharpshooters. I'm loving it. Oh, but that rolling cannonball was just a menace right there. Jesus. That killed three more dudes. Poor, oh, poor Sharpshooters from the US. I mean, look at the stats alone. Damage is decent. Range is exceptional, of course, especially against Avis Gunners. But of course, their lay on animation is a bit complicated, to say the least. And now Lionheart is just waiting over here. 26 villages versus 22. But of course the economy is much better for Risotto. But at the same time we see something that could be... That very much could be the game decider here. On both sides. But of course <laughs> Risotto just completely wasted his artillery. Got one single Falconer kill out of it. He could have easily done that just with that army. And had his cannons in a safe spot. But he chose to go in aggressively. Probably a bit of a panic answer. I don't know. But now he is going to have a hard time against Lionheart here. Because Lionheart has sent Mamluks. And those guys are going to punch on Stay Rap. And of course Lionheart sends him to the front. I don't think. I mean look at those. That's almost 6,000 HP. If you count it in range damage then it is 6,000 HP. That somehow have to be dwindled down. And... Those sharpshooters are not going to do it. The carbine calf could do, uh, could do it, but I don't know if they will be able to do it in time. Look at that a full volley of those guys. Does take off twenty five percent? Oh, but the melee kill comes in. The village is doing their job. Yeah, that's the American way. If the government doesn't protect us, whew, we are just going to do it ourselves. It looks like, and that falcon had went down in the blink of an eye. Lionheart not being careful enough. Great spot, though, from Risotto, in my opinion. And uh, now we're in a weird spot again. <laughs> There's two less TPs on the field, of course. Lionheart is not able to produce villages because he didn't... He built a mosque yet, even? I don't think he has a mosque at all. Yeah, he doesn't. So we are stuck on 26 builds for now. <laughs> and on the other side, Risotto is just producing numbers. He, he has his trickle still, right? Don't forget about that. He is a bit out of hunts, though, so that might prove problematic. 
Where is he getting? Oh, over there. So not out of hunts yet, but still in a not so clean spot, right? And the Ottoman economy. Ah, now we go. There we go. So finally, Galeta Tower District coming in. So we're going to see those numbers go up to at least 40. Uh, look, look at the Skirm Goon Mask here. That's actually quite decent mask. I think that Lionheart might have misplayed his momentum there. Uh, although, let's not be... Let me not be too fast with that statement because we do see a lot of veteran genisaries and not too many skirms to focus them out if need be. So, oh, that cannon is going to get sniped, isn't it? Oh, 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 Lionheart, watch out. Yeah, that one is going to be done for free. Needs to snipe it now before the damage is... Oh, 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 oh. Don't get stuck in there. Ouch, that is that is a bit of a slaughter. I don't think that really paid off for USA there. But, I mean, he's still alive and the cannon's gone. That is um, something. And now, of course, he is going to utilize the full... Oh, my God. But, yeah, <laughs> Sipar here on the field. And those guys, I, I don't think you can stop Sipahis and Mamluks, you know. Let's see how... Because Mamluks are not that much of a problem here. Just because they don't do that much damage, but spies alone are just going to delete everything that's on the field, and that's certainly the GG here for the USA player. Ah, what a shame. What a shame for Rizata here. But yeah, those guys just getting slaughtered, and there's the GG coming in from Rizotto, of course. Take a look at the resources, though. I mean, that was pretty clean, pretty spot on from both players. Military... Um, it feels like Risotto just never got to utilize that, that army that he got from the Scottish immigrants. Those seven um, those seven Highlanders never really did that job. Because he was never in a position to actually do it. The Ottoman FF was so fast and there was anti-infantry on the field so quickly that I guess Risotto never really had the chance to push out against that. To fully utilize his army there. Could have just waited until he got a decent mass and then maybe tried to, to take the fight, especially with his Minutemen and all the extra units he's got. But he decided against it and lost a lot of units in the process. I think that was the biggest issue. What just is your command? how many anti-cav units he had before this fight right here in the end. And then with how little he was left when the spa he actually arrived. That was pretty telling for the situation there. But that's game number two. Let's quickly hop into the statistics, into the info screen in the midst, and get stuff going for the third game. And of course, a 1 1 is always a very, very welcome sight in this, you know. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just, when I'm casting especially, I'm just a sucker for those really, really close games, you know, where, where, it's just, where it literally comes down to this one last game to decide who comes out on top. And don't forget, <clears throat> don't forget, we are in a situation where it's not like any of those individual points, individual games are meaningless and just comes out to who takes it all. But rather, if Risotto makes a point, if he gets one, then, of course... His team, the semi FF gang, is up one point. And on the other side, the Gajonians, if they make a point, if Lionheart wins a game, he gets a point. And those are going to be put up against each other. Meaning, if we have a score of 5 to 2 in the end, let's say for Risotto 5, 2 for Lionheart, then of course, it's going to be 3 points going towards the uh, Gajonians. So keep that in mind. Uh, semi FF gang, I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting confused myself here. Load into the next. Let's load into the next one and see what we can make of it. There we go. Next map, obviously, is uh, Lake Victoria, which is one of those games that has seen a lot of meta with one specific sieve. <laughs> and I can tell you, it is on this map again because we see Risotto playing Hodonoshone and Lionheart coming up with his Mexican this time. As a Hodonoshone main, I am quite excited for this one because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's uh, about to come down here, or to, to, to 
be played in front of us just because I don't know how resorts usually place them. And this map, though, has seen a lot of very specific build orders tailored to, to Hodenotroni just because you have this... How can I tell? How can I say this the best? I think this double bonus for the sieve that you actually start with five extra population space and the builder to boy that enables you to build a dock for basically no resource in h1 and this combination just makes makes it incredibly powerful i mean just as we saw the game between i think yeah felter toby and passi for example i was also in the playoffs there we had a hot and shiny mirror on this map actually but that's enough of me talking about other games Let's focus on the one that's right in front of us, shall we? And let's get this party started. This time in the north, <laughs> Risotto again. He's just, he's just a northern guy, it seems. He has been in the northern side of the maps all the time so far. And as I said, there's this discovery to avoid and call it whatever you want but in the end it's a builder to avoid that lets you build a dock no of those none of those usual shenanigans you have with it because as all hold on players know that thing usually likes to bug around building sites for ages and ages and ages lake chad a map without a trade route but a lot of natives right so we've got somali we've got sufi and somali again and one important thing about this map again you have a lot of livestock on the side over here and you start with a fishing boat each. Not oh, with two fishing boats, actually. Actually, Never mind, it seems like I'm just confused again. But this, of course, is important because the, the lake itself has no coin, so you don't want to overcommit on it. But since both players already have some economy on this part of the map, you do need to take that into account. That is very important. And look at that, a 70 wood treasure here, of course. That can that can be another boat for both players. We don't see actually we don't see any uh, dock start shenanigans from Lionheart on the other side. Oh, oh, Risotto is careful. He has to be because the the, the Leon animation of course is dog shit for the Hodenshawn Explorer, and he just lost the treasure because of it. And not the Leon animation, but rather the melee fighting animation. That is just it is absolutely terrible. It takes way too long. So every time you get snared or you want to kill something quickly in melee, uh, you're not going to have a nice, uh, a good time with this explorer. Great, great unit after all. Very other purpose, but not for that. And look at that. That's the specific build that I'm talking about on this map. 15 population, no house needed. You just go for the wood for extra fishing boats. He's going to have four fishing boats out. And he was going to have a rather decent population here. Gonna age up at 220, I assume, because he is eating a sheep. Or he's staying healthy, getting lots of proteins in there. And with a fast age up, of course, you can really punish any. But I don't think with that age up that fast you want to age up. Yeah, wise woman, that is the age up that gives you 200 food, 100 coin, and 100 wood, obviously. So that is really, really decent if you need some resources on the map. And also, why no fast age up in this situation? Of course, because you're never going to have the XP to actually send something once you age up. And then the whole tempo is not really that impactful, is it? Lionheart on the other side, he just sent yeah, the Hacienda Wagon and the two settlers, obviously. And he's just aging up pretty, pretty normally. Fourteen village age ups also not too slow. Aging up with Michoacan, which makes a lot of sense, of course. Uncovers the map, gives you fishing boat and all that. I just quickly have to check his thing. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Another another treasure over here, of course. 80 coin. Which, uh, yeah, for Lionheart will be useful if he starts... Oh! Oh, he is aggressive here. He he really wants to. <laughs> he really wants to to show Risotto what he can do. It seems like, and apparently his HF was much better than I anticipated because three forty. That means he had a three a two. Uh, two ten HF almost, which is of course great. So, really strong HF right here from Lionheart, and he's gonna get a full batch of units, isn't he? Just needs another house to make sure that he gets it. 
And he needs it sooner than later. Oh, he might just catch the explorer. That is huge because Honoshoni, first of all, that's 90 XP right there. 100 even, sorry. Forgot it's it's not a general, uh, not a Asian explorer. And I mean, at least he's getting a shot off, but that is, that is huge. Because that guy, of course, also gives a stacking aura on, on HP for all the units around him. So 10% on top of what his units usually have. And I mean, look at that. I don't know. I don't think that Hodenshoni can actively defend this, this ward here. There's villagers coming in, so he went super greedy. Hodenshoni went extremely greedy in this situation. And now he's on the back foot. Lost his first unit. Uh, lost his first building. Now still is not done with gathering up his age of bonus. Ah, that, that is harsh. That is extremely harsh for Dorizotto in this situation. But on the other side, of course, 70, <clears throat> 17 villages versus 27. Which is quite the number. With Hodenoshoni, at some point you definitely want to get uh, a Kanu or something. Just one is enough for the start if the enemy does not have anything on water. Because then you can just get all the water cleaned off or at least force the enemy into constant in this constant game of hiding and running around. And if he's on water, you, you will need to go in a canoe anyways at some point. Lionheart a bit too scared to actually walk in here. He's waiting for his, his skirmish of support, but he could have taken under Warhut. I don't reckon he will be able to do so right now without heavy cost but ah uh, well maybe i was a bit too quick with that assessment ah oh, jesus that that thing is going to go down isn't it uh, and there's not going to be any refunds and now the villagers of course are in harm's way that is going to cost him economy at least one yeah great stuff so far from line huh? actually Getting a huge, huge military advantage now. Skirms and pikes on the field, of course. And uh, a really uncomfortable spot here for our boy in the blue. He's also certainly sweating in his seat right now. Or he was when he actively played this. Actually played this is the right word. Sorry. And Mexico. Oh, now, now actually, oh, not only getting the explorer back, which is a good thing. But he won't. Be alive for long, I guess. Not pull trick saves the day again. Great stuff for him. Because that guy needs to be alive to just buff this army, otherwise it's gonna to be toast anyway sooner than later. Oh 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 run boy. Pull trick again. <laughs> and now we are in a difficult spot here for for Hodenoshani because if that thing goes down, first of all you lose access to further producing water economy. Second of all, your enemy has the advantage of cleaning you of the water without you being able to garrison your villages. And all of that coming together with Lionheart slowly but surely advancing in his economic numbers himself. Difficult, difficult spot. Look at Lion. He's actually sending four villages after this. So he is just increasing economic numbers step by step. Oh, we get a few shots in on the Insurgentes and those numbers are dwindling now as well. But I'm not too sure. That it's a very difficult situation for both players, of course. How they needs to defend this, how they needs to make sure they, they can stay in water and actually can make sure to, to keep the enemy off water. But at the same time, Mexico is also in a difficult spot because they have been overly aggressive for this entire period now. And they can't allow Honoshoni to get even one foot on the ground here. Because once they do, the roles can switch very, very quickly. But Lion actually revolts, and we're actually seeing Central America revolt, meaning that we have seven more villages on the field, and that's even economy numbers. 38 versus 33, and that's also counting five fishing boats, so economy numbers are way, wor uh, way worse for our Mexican, uh, for our Hodenshoni player. Ooh, nice shot right there. I think there was a special ability. Yeah, we've careful in the field now. So, oh, 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 that's not good. That is not good. I think Rizzotto overcommitted here, went in too deep. I mean, the good thing for him is that, obviously, the revolutionaries just suck against any kind of heavy cav if they're not masked properly. They're really, literally just cannon for them in this situation. And look at that. The Kanya with the backup of the infantry are enough to clean this entire, entire mass from Lionheart and suddenly that's what I meant 
when he overextends, that might just be the nail in his coffin right there. And now he is going to lose his front base for sure. I mean, he is able to build artillery, which will be very hard to deal with for Risotto on the other side. Do we see a stable? Nope. The Risotto actually trying to age. That is risky. I think, I honestly think I would try to play this with, with lots and lots of um, Afghani riders. Might sound weird, but Kanye West actually, because they also tank 30% instead of 20, like most Hussars, can hold their own against those revolutionaries, especially early on. Deal with revolutionary um, Central America, in my opinion at least, if you just focus on Kev early on and try to keep the infantry numbers down, then the enemy will always have overly exposed artillery. Right. But now, of course, we are in the spot. Yeah. Shots are flying. Good dodge there on the one unit, so he didn't lose too much there. Never mind. <laughs> Second shot hits way too close to home and smashes to Grandma's window, it seems like. Yeah, and Risotto now aging. He can, uh, he can of course, age fast. That's that's a good thing for him. But I don't know if he wants to be on gold so heavily. It depends on whether or not he wants to actually send the five cures here. But now the problem is the revolutionary numbers are growing bigger. And your units are not really... Unit numbers are not really increasing. Results are not training anything. Not... There is a stable in the back, of course. So he is going to try to go for Kanye's. Good choice there. Also evacuating a lot of units there. Necessary. Hurts, but necessary. And the Ajib is going to come through. Military building. Probably in the back. Yeah, another war hut. Good stuff right there. And of course the Kanye. Well, that's that's some good awareness. Actually, the Kanye rider going through the backside and making sure that the war chief is all up and going for the upcoming fight. And look at the score. It is pretty damn close. PC is taking heavy hits though. I mean he is gonna he's not gonna be out of a shipment point, although. Of course, if, if those unit if that thing dies. And now we got the elite musket rider, Hordenshawny's best method in age 3 of dealing with artillery. I mean, all their care is more or less tuned to countering artillery. Oh, that, no, 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 that's the wrong choice, Sir Lionheart. You need to carry on, you need to focus on, on, on the artillery, on the TC. Yeah, and there we go. And now this entire village of Mars has to be evacuated and... Lock E is certainly ticking here for Risotto. He needs to make something happen fast before the revolutionary numbers grow too thick and he can't I think he can't risk diving in there and then taking out the Falcon at him more. Because that is the situation right now. That literally is what he has to do. He has to take care of those Falcon before they tear down his entire base, obviously. Oh, oh. Will we see the first snipe? Yeah, yeah. First Arty is going to go down and he has to run away now, but the Kanye is there. He gets the hit in. What a hero. That man will be sung. That man will have songs made about him in, in future centuries, I guess. <laughs> oh, let's commemorate the hero right there. He just took down with one swing. That got them Falconer. But of course, we still have huge numbers of revolutionaries. Terrible units for most purposes, but once you have the numbers, they just repel about can repel or at least body block most of the units that can endanger those falconets and i just see like risotto needs to somehow get a flank in to to actively contest this because his base is about to be torn down on the other side of course don't forget central america it's a revolution you can't build any units after that oh oh do we see the dive from the side ah there was a quick pause that might have cost him the, the opportunity of the situation, but he actually manages to get down the next fault. But I'm pretty sure reinforcing Falconets are on their way sooner or later. Yeah, there's at least one more coming in. He's also getting Visit of the Seven Houses, which means that he gets um, Insurgentes for each house that he has on the map. Oh, there we go. So, nine houses, nine Insurgentes. Good. Good support there. So now that most of the artillery is cleaned off, but now most of the Hanushan economy is also in shambles. Look at that. 38 to 38. And 
we don't really have the units to fight this because even though revolutionaries are terrible units overall, um, they do they do make a dent <laughs> against elite musket riders. Don't forget those guys have less range resist than most other goon units, but of course they have a higher multiplayer against um, advanced artillery to fight this off. Uh, this is a dense situation. I mean, now we're even getting popped here for Odenshani. I mean, he has to migrate his units all over the place. Oh, 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 and the... Ah, oh, those were his most important units. The rifles. I, I just... I think Risotto really... He, he has played this well from the point after he was pushed. I think he went a bit too greedy at the start. Should have scouted the front face a bit earlier. But damn it, man, I think now he's just lost the momentum where he can uh, try to contest this mass because it's just going to get bigger and bigger. It is the self-sustaining system at this point. Lionheart sending 700 coin. He's actually going to try and age up here. And if he hits age 4, I think that is the... Le that is very much the spot where I think Risotto has to call it quits. I mean, I really love how he's playing this. He is taking his pot shots. He's making sure that... He gets the shots in there and just keeping Lionheart on his toes, but it doesn't help if there's more and more reinforcements dwindling in, does it? And Lionheart now, now that he knows that he's about to age up, he's just, yeah, there we go. Mexico coming back into age four. With this 5,000 po point score lead, that is, that is insane. And I think he pulled off a very successful push, utilized his artillery well, and just Risotto was never really able to keep the numbers down. And that's what you have to do against this revolution. You just have to keep the numbers down so you can actively snipe the artillery much more cost effectively, uh, grow your own economy. And also, if you can, if you have the APM and especially the, the military, the spare military for it, go raid because they can never replenish the military, uh, the, the economic numbers, of course. But. Lionheart, contempt with the damage he did, is pulling back out of Hollandershoney lands. And I think, as Hollandershoney, I would be a bit confused right now because I, I don't think that I would be able to tell that Mexico is actually able to age at this point. <laughs> okay. We see Vetkania coming in. We also have another shipment, but we have no TC. We have no means of replenishing villages and nothing. And now Dio de Muertos comes in as well, which means that we're going to see a hefty increase in XP. Just about when you hit the next stage. It's a bit of a shame that... Oh, State Religion should still up his, his rewards, right? Nope, does not affect the transition back to Mexico, so that's a bit weird. So yeah, 38 villages on... I, yeah, there we go. H4. We see it. And look at all those options here. He's going for Renegade Apache immediately. And that thing is... That is a mean shipment. Because those guys, of course, have an additional multiplayer on villages. Meaning that all Hodenshoni economy here on land has been ravaged as it is by... <laughs> by the Central American assault there. But it will dwindle further after that shipment comes in. And on the other side, of course, Lionheart... He knows that he is going to be pressured in the second, so he is just sending military, military, gets his own village uh, upgrades, 203 HP. A bit better fighting capabilities as well, but mostly the HP bonus is there. And yeah, there we go. Hod and Shunny Masters pouring into Lionheart's base, but are they here to turn the tide, or are they just here to seek revenge and die on their crusade here? We will see. <laughs> And both players are a bit hesitant, but of course Lionheart can afford to be hesitant, while, yeah, Risotto certainly cannot. Wait, where did those guys... Oh my god, oh no. The front base is still up and standing. That is that is where Hodnoshani probably dies, I reckon. Because those guys are just going to go straight into the base of Hodnoshani and take care of any villages they find. Look at that. One. Two. And I mean, they have a one, yeah, they basically do 50 damage, again, almost 50 damage or 45 against villagers. And now we see the Falcon that's on the way. And while there's a lot of dead villagers on the other side as well, there is now three Falconets and two heavy cannons right behind those. 
It is a pure slaughter on both sides. 23 villages versus 34, actually. Um, but I don't know if the reinforcements here are going to be enough. Yeah, and, and Harden and Shoni getting cleaned even further. And there comes the GG from Risotto. What a game. <laughs> what a Emotional up and down for myself as well, but a back and forth between two, uh, those two players as well. Look at the resources though. Lionheart actually had in resources and military numbers almost dead even. But of course, if we look at this, that drop here. Actually, <laughs> Lionheart, much more dead units, but of course he's in H4 now. So yeah, and Risotto is in H3 without a TC, which we should see right there. Yeah. From here on out, so you see, you see the issues, right? Lionheart with a perfect aggression, keeping it up, keeping it stable, almost got zoned out there in a second and got cleaned up pretty, pretty nicely by Risotto, in my opinion. But then, of course, transitioning to the more or less economic rewards of Central America and getting the cannon infantry mass out that you need here. Strong play, and that's game number three. I hope you guys enjoyed it so far. Let's go back into the intro screen and start up the next game as soon as possible. All right, so let's load up the next game. Game number four coming in a second. Ooh, and that's nice. Next game is Pampa Sienas. One of the most well-known maps, I think. One of the most... Um, not just requested, but also most beloved maps when it comes to no TP maps, just because of all the dynamics that still are able on this specific map and on the out of the norm Civ peaks that we see here, of course. Very popular are Civs like India, Japan, Inca nowadays, of course. Dutch, actually. Everything just doesn't usually play around with uh, TP starts, which is fascinating because we actually see Risotto on India. So that one was called for. Hmm? No, no weird stuff there, but we see Lionheart on the Portuguese. And I do not feel, at least I myself, do not feel confident in that Civ pick on that specific map because you've got no water and you have absolutely no TPs for extra XP generation. And the way that Portuguese is played nowadays, of course, is rather aggressively H H3 and just uh, aggressive pushes with shipment after shipment. Looking at you there, Swisher Guts. <laughs> But um, in this situation, I don't think that there is enough XP for Portugal to be played like that. So let's see what Lionheart has in store for us. All right. In the north again, <laughs> it's it's just his damn luck, it seems. We see Risotto with the Indians and in the south, of course, the Portuguese explorer and town center coming in from Lionheart. I mean, I don't think I have to explain this map too much, but obviously for those of you who haven't seen too many tournaments in this area, uh, Pampas is a map without a TP line, so no extra regeneration, as I said before, and... One special thing about here, it's the asymmetrical map design because you have in the western side this cliff mountainous area with a lot of hunts, herds, mines and all that. But also eight of those deliciously juicy llamas if you're the Portuguese players and very religious shipment boosting animals if you're India. Uh, let's not get too deep into the logic behind this. But Lionheart actually taking like a pro. Just going in there, going for the kill. He does not care. He does not want the llamas. He just wants to make sure that his opponent does not get extra XP income on a map that has no XP income for himself. So, <laughs> interesting, interesting style of dealing with the situation. I think there should still be three or four of those llamas coming in for, for Risotto. Well, let's check. 
actually five. Never mind. So I, I don't know if that little swoop was worth it instead of baked things I would do to you. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lionheart not even being here but making us all blush, I guess. <laughs> Risotto on the other side. Huh? Yeah, with the standard explorers. And the usual play here. One thing that makes India so great on this map is, of course, Agra four stars. You can put it forward, you can have the map control, and you can put it forward and still go rather economically behind it. Also, don't forget, this was before the nerf on the XP curve for India was implemented. So we are looking at a rather conservative 108% XP cost per shipment. Oh, is he going to lose those two goats? Uh, sheep, sorry. Or not? Uh, close, but no, I think he gets away with it. He does need to pull trick his explorer out of there and still manage to sheep at the same time without going vilile. So, you know, 15 things at the same time, but he manages more or less. But Lion is continuing to be annoying as hell here. I reckon that once the sheep are safely to the base, then he will focus more on pulling his explorer friend out of there. Yeah, there we see. Pull trick after pull trick, just desperately trying to get this man out of there. Poor poor monk being beaten down on. And I think now he should be safe if the pathing doesn't screw him. Oh, never mind. That's just 18 HP. Oh, he's going to go down. Ah, 45 XP for Portugal. But line a bit lazy on the edge up there. That we go. Philosopher's Prince. No extra food. Risotto on the other side. Going up with 700... Yeah, but do we have any forward villages? Yes, we actually do. So I'm pretty darn sure that this is going to be the Agra 4. Yep. Interesting position as well. I personally prefer to put it more over here. Just for the reason that uh, when we have it here. Obviously. So in the middle of the map. We do not have the issue that... Um, how to put this precisely... You kind of have a, a more creative block here because over here of course this entire segment blocks any enemy movement and if you get it at least for sight and put a house here you more or less have this entire length of the map secured or scouted i think my mental is over already yeah <laughs> don't forget those guys have been, had played these games uh, back to back right without a big pause or anything they just piece by piece took it down i think lionheart even streamed that stuff uh i don't think because I talked to him before this, before uh, actually thinking about casting or after casting this, if he wants to upload his videos or if he has any issue, we do it. And he was all right with it. So I reckon he does not have it on his YouTube yet. If you're interested, of course, just check it out. It's going to be in the description. Also, if you just Google Lionheart, obviously you're going to find his YouTube. And Risotto mostly active on the free food party. So shout out to those guys, partner clone of ours as well, of course. <sighs> Right side, 80 coin coming down for Risotto. Yeah, and that takes the cake. That's going to be good on his market. Technology. Town center being put down very defensively. Let's just quickly see if Lionheart scouted. Yeah, he obviously scouted that. Which is, of course, important. Because if you miscalculate the situation here and think, oh yeah, it's surely going to be an agroport and it's not, that is going to come back to bite you in the ass once India is on... Akani Mata and all their technologies from the market, obviously. At this point, I'm just going to shortly, uh, quickly pause the game for a technical issue, but going to be right back. And we are back. There we go. Uh, just quickly making sure I did not know that. Somehow it must have been reset, or so I never really bothered about it. But now you can actually see my mouse, which uh, the cursor makes it a bit easier for me uh, and makes it easier for you to see and understand what i mean when i say here is where i want to see uh, the fort actually so those two tcs defensively in base i just don't know man okay h3 is being put up here he is going to have with the buildings that he's going to build he is probably going to have equipment ready there actually did not go for fiatorias interesting really interesting because that means he has of course a bit less or a bit fewer resources there oh, he's able to produce villages all right risotto on the other side he is just he is going economically as hell 
Wait, wait a second. Are we actually going to see? He is heavy. Yeah. He is heavy on food and a little bit on coins. So I reckon we are actually going to see an FF. There's some annoyance here in H2. Why Lionheart is aging up? Just just making sure Lionheart doesn't feel too safe. Oh, that is, I, I like that. Because that means that he's going to be up and probably going to have his elephants, his siege elephants ready to counter any organ cannons that come in, any organ guns that we see from the Portuguese player. I'm, I'm really looking forward. I'm interested in seeing what Lionheart is going to put up. If he wants to make this nasty, then he's just going to start with the fort and make sure that India is not going to come in. But in the side, of course, siege elephants should be able to take that down. It's just putting that idea out there, so... That, so that more or less past Risotto can follow that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And Tower of Victory, actually. Interesting. Ah, for the wood, probably. So he has the infrastructure. That makes a lot of sense. I never thought, because my usual India build order is, of course, Agra for most of the time. And behind that, the next one is usually the, the Charmina Gate for your starting or age three, immediate age three howder. No, wait, not how that mouth, sorry. And of course the ability to upgrade your own units with Mansopta units that buff just every set they have. So all of those options. That that's just the standard play that I go for, but with an FF of course, Victory Tower that gives you in ten to fifteen seconds buff on your unit's fighting capabilities is also a very nice option, just because it enables you to if you are pushed, right? You can fight the push with Almost age three stats immediately without needing the upgrades. So let's see how this fight is going to go down here. Huh? Some hits going down on the veteran halberdiers. Lionheart going for organ guns, a few magoons, villagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is now on economy mode. He wants to get all his upgrades in. Has not, he doesn't have a single upgrade on food right now though. Which even for an FF is a bit risky if you're trying to produce out of three TCs at the same time. Well, let's see where we're going. There we go. First up market ops come in. And he's not going to be able to, to queue two villages at the same time. But I think he thinks that this army is enough here. Might not have... Might not have expected how fast India is up here, of course. And we see more skirms coming in. I don't like the skirms too much there. Just because a skirm fight might sound nice, but not if it's organ guns coming up next. And here they are. So that aggro fall is bye-bye. We're not going to see that again. And Casados, of course, against H2 Gurkha. It's not a question if they trade, they just demolish them. As we can see here, I mean, look at that. They casually being cannon shotted from the side and still don't really care. I mean, of course, Agra 4 shots look a lot scarier than they actually are with 25 range damage, not siege damage. So, yeah, and that's all down. 320 XP on a map like that immediately gives Lionheart another shipment for free. And he can be quite pleased with himself. That's an entire age of bonus for India denied. Map control and all that gone. India has to kind of rebuild themselves now. Siege elephants, of course, coming in as the necessary reaction in this situation. But at the same time, upgrades only sparely dropping in. And we've got 29 villages to 33. So I'm um, pretty sure Lionhead is going to catch up in villa numbers and therefore economy in a bit. Score is only slightly favoured now for Portugal, but I guess that is going to increase if India can, can't can make something work in this situation there, though. Nobody is on the eastern side, by the way. That is something that's also very important. The eastern side, this this more or less split-off part here by the river, is usually never economically interesting until the late game or until the early uh, late mid-game, because... What you usually see is that these parts here are much easier to wall off and to secure for your own hunts, uh, for your own economic base, basically. And that means that the right side is really, that's the one that when you push out there, usually you either don't have access over here or everything you have access to over here is already gone. One of the two is usually the case. But yeah, look at India's army. We've got some sepoys, a lot of Gurkha, some siege elephants, and uh, an interesting war. <laughs> I don't know if that's a line of sight wall from Lionheart, but it probably is. 
because he knows that your average Inya player can't deny the satisfaction of two-shotting a wall nowadays. Let's see. But he's actually not doing it. Lionheart is also not seeing... Ah! Ah, that's interesting. So he actually did not choose to shoot... He didn't choose to shoot at the walls, which is great. Great reaction control, in my opinion, because I would have been... I would have been... Oh, what? Take it down. Just, just for the fun of it. Just for seeing how two of those guys just easily demolish uh, any walling on the map. But of course, this is going to be difficult. Disciplined Gurk is out though, so that is going to make the fight a bit more even. And now the question is, where are the organ guns? In the back safety, because it looks like Leinhardt is perfectly happy with this fight. Doesn't look like he, at any point is afraid of, of uh, fating or taking the straight on fight with those guys. Don't forget 18 damage to 19, 110 HP to uh, 147. So certainly HP as the unit quality bonus is by now on the side of the veteran Casados, uh, by the side of the, on the side of the Discipline Gurkha from India. I think Rizotto must have sent through a shipment for that already, or he is on Brit's consulate. He is of course on Brit's consulate. Now then that makes sense. Otherwise the HP would not be that. That high usually. But let's see how this is going to go on. He is pushing now on the left side. He sees. Yeah, he sees all the dead villages. Villages. I guess that's a bit of, of foreseeing. A fortune telling, I reckon. But no, none of dead villages yet. But they were about to be dead. And look at that. Organ guns over here. Did he actually? No, didn't never shoot. Didn't ever shot on them. But that's a lot of dead Gurkhas there. Holy cow. And the elephants are on the wrong side here. Oh, oh! Hmm. Ah, he was actually quite lucky. That could have gone so much worse. If Lionheart had done some split fire action right there, he could have killed eight or nine skirms in one shot. And now, of course, he's being hunted back to his base, and the elephants are dead. As good as dead. And without the siege elephants, this fight is almost lost already. But actually, Lionheart did not was not able to back off or did not uh, follow through they like that siege ellie's actually getting the first shot yeah that's great first siege ellie going down though and honestly that organ gun on the side not doing the job it's supposed to do uh, that fight because just because the, the gurkhas are so much better right now stepwise that's the only reason why it's going so well i think and because line is absolutely and zooming out or doing something different because he is only now really focusing his artillery fire on the units he needs to fire on. And look at the score. India actually back in the game with this. Dam's also coming in. Oh, but that elephant actually doing great damage on that organ gun. Might be able to get another shot out. Yeah, and there we go. And now the fight is not just one-sided but clearly over for Lionard over here. He needs to get our units back in his base again. But uh, yeah, we see Sours now coming in, and those guys are going to clean up. If yeah, we've got some more Sambrex as a backup. Gurkha being produced as well, and apparently we have two stables. No, we only have one stable. The the upgrade is coming in. Look at that! Village is actually being pushed in the fight, trying trying to <laughs> get the siege elephant. And as I said, a lot of dead villages on the ground, or at least a couple. 44 villages to 46 and that's the problem line has on the one side been producing i don't think he has been producing uh, has been non-stop producing villages here but military at the start and now only now he switches to full-on villager production and that of course very heavily limits his abilities to actually produce military again so first military then villages and now he has no military on the field and is not really producing too much as well he is an organ guns though, so uh, let's see how he can utilize those. In this situation, that might actually be the right call. And he has at least some bet halberdiers. So those guys might also do a number on, on Risotto if they come in in the right spot. Oh, but now things get difficult because now we've got the Discipline Sours and those guys are not good at a lot. Not good in care fights, not good at body blocking or anything. But once they hit your skirms, they absolutely eat them up for breakfast. Oh, great call here. Explorer coming out, snaring. 
the units are on the other side line uh, resort to also making sure that these units are properly grouped so they don't take a lot of stash damage not too much use there though look at that almost all the gurkhas going down with two or three shots and that was a great defense great defense from line all his resources put into these organ guns and that's his push now he needs to win this he needs to make sure that india knows their place in this situation otherwise india might still outscale him sounds weird with three tcs against one but Second TC is being put down over here. Oh, so I was for a second, I didn't see that. And that guy should... If physics in this game were even close to realistic, that guy would just be, you know, a smooch in the wall right there. Just some, uh, like some dropped red paint. <laughs> or very finely dismantled corpse, basically. At the same time, we see some Dragoons coming in because he, of course, knows the Sawas are incredibly dangerous, especially if he loses those veteran helps. And what do we see from Risotto as a counter? Ooh, goddamn Rumis, of course. Those guys are, for all of you who don't know, shock, um, hand shock? Is it hand shock? Infantry, so basically, cavalry without a horse. Don't, don't question that any further. Uh, meaning, though, that they do not take as much damage from organ guns as they usually would. We also see the famous, infamous at this point, Minutemen pop from India. But at the wrong timing, in my opinion. And we also have... Ah, wait. Inspiration is not there yet. And look at that. Ah, if they had popped to the right side, that could have been gone so much wrong there. But now, of course, Urumis are on the field. Is not tagged as either light or heavy infantry. That's the point. If you're wondering what kind of extra description I have here, of course, that they a better description mod. Check that out as well. Great stuff. Helps with casting as well, thing. <laughs> and they counter heavy and light infantry. Counter. But down here, I think, at least it looks like there's a lot of reinforcing infantry going down. And look at that. Now we've got two siege elephants. And I think, I think Lionheart is going to be caught with the tanks down right there. Because all his heavy infantry is going to go down here. The Rumis are in the fight. They do not take extra damage from the artillery. But actually, actually still not doing too well against the artillery on the other side. So it is a really weird fight. To say the least here again. Towers though, are still on the field. Not too many anti units there. And, and those two siege elephants are going to have their time of the life. Yeah, just taking down that one surviving cannon and now score after this incredible slaughter is actually still even. However that worked. <laughs> and now we see, yeah, basically everything on the western side for India has all been taken, eaten and, and transported back to the home city. Silver mine, that's the last piece of resource that's safely in... in Lionheart's own in Risotto's control and now he's heavily investing on the right side just as I told you once the resources over there run out you need to go to the other side and that one it might not feel like it but that is the more exposed spot so it often feels like it mm, look at that India finding the four early might just about be able to take down the four itself it really depends if Risotto takes the fight here smartly, but it looks like he's actually getting slaughtered. But at the same time, the second Siege Elephant comes in just before sieging it down. Don't, don't go back now. Oh my god. Ah, that was so close. If Lionheart had managed to push Risotto off convincingly here, ah, then this thing would have been, would have done a huge job. But now, actually... <laughs> We have a, bad, a really, really dire spot for Lionheart because now, of course, we've got extra elephants in. And let's just check what came in there. It's actually the bigger shipment. Three goddamn disciplined Mahouts. That's 3,000 HP on those guys. And they are here to stay because even the Dragoons, the Dragoon Mass is just by far too small to actually contest that army. And I think for the last fight, Inspiration might just come in clutch and might just come in in time, especially... If we see two PC pops from both sides. Yeah, there we go. From that side, Mahouts is there, Sowers is there. And, and you're not going to come out of this one alive, Lionheart. Because even though the pathing of Mahouts is absolutely terrible. 
There is just too much mass on the field now. Three elephants. One is down, but still more souls passing forward. Mahout's right behind that. It don't want to be one of those green guys over here. If those angry, angry elephants are coming at you. But actually, the Dragoons all sacrificing themselves. So the Casador Mask can survive. A questionable trade in my opinion. But at the same time, still a good one. Somehow. <laughs> Alright, Lionheart. Lionheart not too satisfied with the performance of Portuguese on this map. Um, I, I mean, Lionheart and me, of course, are at different levels at the game. I mean, I'm talking here for all this out of my ass. <laughs> From a 1650... Elo level against the 19 on the Elo player, but at the same time, I do have to question the decision to play a TP based map, a TP, a TP based civilization on a map without extra TP income. If I may, you know what I mean. But yeah, 57 to 66 villages actually, and Lionheart will soon have to transition to something, to, to any other option because his resources are running out and they're running out fast. I think. Does he see those guys? Oh no. He basically did not know that there's another hunt down here and now if India is pushing in from this side there's no chance of, of actually finding it or of actually taking it if he doesn't completely delete this. Oh god. Ah, oh, poor trick. And that would have been a very very cheap elephant snipe right there. Two sea jellies in the back. More reinforcements coming in. That was infantry combat if I'm not mistaken. No, what was it? Veteran class, yeah, infantry combat, so 50%, 20 damage now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, and that elephant goes down. <laughs> Even some minute men are still alive from the earlier pop there. And Lionheart actually defending this push here from India. Very strong, but at the same time, we see a musket raid. It's the British. British, the British fighting actually for all in your play here and risotto just sees that he's um not risotto sees that he's better here but a uh, line on either side realizes that he's being pushed off the last resources he has he has not transitioned yet so there's nothing that he can use to to even temporarily boost his eco and get some additional numbers out and he sees the reinforcements over here with the wall he sees them over there and he knows that his wills are going to die in masters over there so that's the gg from lionheart over here game number four is in the can that's it nice play from both players a back and forth and look at that risotto just out gathering him and that's what i meant by out scaling even though lionheart of course had some really great trades with the organ guns on the field villager population look at that lionheart pulling ahead here but then staggering and more or less yeah trying to get somewhere but not and then of course running out of economy after all all Green post is not really relevant here, but there we go. All resources gathered. Resorto ahead and never falling behind again. Never. That's that's impressive. That's I mean that's three eight three two. That's twenty percent resource lead basically. I'm not that off with my math. And also let's take a quick look at idle villages. That's just at the end especially for both players though. But Military Union population, yeah. The first fight actually went okay for Risotto, which is fascinating to me. Then that fight was huge at first, but still not too great for Lionheart. And that fight over here, where he finally got caught out between the TCs, was just absolutely terrible for him. I hope you enjoyed this game as well. Now we are basically over the past time, and it brings us back to a wonderful 2-2. <laughs> Don't forget about my um, balanced games I don't want to call it fetish, but you know what I mean, right? I just I just love it when it's a bit like that. <laughs> Go back to the pre-match screen then. And let's see what the next matchup has in store for us. Alright. By the way, since I am more or less the unofficial YouTube guy for you, so please do let me know if you enjoy these kind of YouTube exclusives. Because, of course, obviously, it is a lot of work. <laughs> and if you guys find them rather unnecessary, then I would be, you know, just let me know. Then I can focus more on the stuff that was casted live or in the course of the tournament itself. 
Otherwise, if you do enjoy these things coming up when they were not casted when the event was going on, I'm happy to continue this thing. All right. Let's see what we have here in the next game. Game number five. We're getting closer and closer to match point. And Risotto, as, a, as an after message, you know those messages that often get written or get sent after somebody already GG'd in a game and blocked out. Those messages often get transferred into the next recording that you open. So I just... I just got the last message from Risotto, I think. We all have our mental GG sieves or mental block sieves, so... That's that's the kind of friendly understanding that I'm talking about here when I said those two players have this friendly rivalry. So, great sportsmanship from both players here. The map is, this time, uh, should be Ivory Coast. It absolutely is. And we've got Lionheart on the United States this time. So, some more US action and... On the other side, we have got China from Risotto. So let's see how this plays out. I actually I don't I haven't seen a cast on this map in a long time because it's just not a very popular map, I reckon. A lot of the African maps are not really in the under the favorites for tournament situations, but we tried to mix it up a little here. So if you guys are ready, I'm as well. Let's get this started again. Game number five, Risotto with China against USA from Lionheart. All right. Now, in the western side, we've got Lionheart and Risotto in the east. So this this north northeastern spawn for Lionheart, that's just... It's just what it is. I'm not going to question it anymore. You saw it. I saw it. That's map hex for sure. From both players, of course. <laughs> One interesting part about this is, of course, that both players start with a treasure that gives them a trickle. Uh, I don't know if it's always the experienced trickle, but can be, certainly. We do see that Risotto is prioritizing his TP, though. So, again, map knowledge. He must have... I mean, of course, it can also be a, a general reaction there but i do think that he has played this before so he knows that he needs to get down here asap to actually get the next pass which is of course not going to be this one but the one after so there we go water trade lines by the way i love that fact uh very at least to me cinematic feeling to his maps that have a water trade line on the other side lineard with the usa Outs going down, no TP, so he is certainly not going to play fast FF water. Okay, makes sense. He is not going to play with the Chinese immigrants here, although he would have the chance with enough, uh, fairly enough trade sites, of course. Laser is distracting. What? Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, I understand that. I do understand that. Because this, the voice lines... I mean, that's your choice, though. But ground control to Major Chom. Uh, I'm sorry, but Lionheart is certainly winning the Explorer name battle over here. That is just nothing you can say against... Uh, oh, God, my music knowledge. Bowie, yeah, thank you very much. That, was, that really took a second there, brain. <laughs> but pay respects to Legend, please. Risotto now going for... March. I'm not going to try to translate that. <laughs> uh, T export, of course. First card. So the console is going down. The XP, um, the export, the export trickle is about to happen in a second. Yep, there we go. Those numbers are going to pick up. And we see the French consulate. So he is going to do one of those classic French builds where he sends the wood and uh, the food. I, I do have the feeling that... I do not want to know what's underneath those hashtags, but let's just, let's just not ask. All right. Lionheart, his second cut. Is it going to be Spanish immigrants, though, for the extra XP curve, or is it just my imagination here? He is aging up with another villager, so three minute age up. Should be pretty decent still, though. Yeah, and what is he aging up with? Virginia, actually. So. All of you don't know Virginia is, of course, the FF age up usually because it has a certain technology that comes with it. Um, 
is it the Virginia General Assembly or something like that? What that card does is it costs a shipment, but it also gives you two shipments immediately. And it does not give you the XP for them, but basically gives you two shipments flat. So it, as far as I know, at least, it does not step, increase the shipment cost for the next few shipments. That makes any sense. Instead of just straight up giving you XP. Lionheart now going for the Spanish immigrants. And Risotto on the other side. Aging up with the summer pillars. What a surprise. I, yeah, look at the deck. I mean, the, the thing with China here is actually it could be anything. It could be a true play still. Sounds weird, but yeah, could be. Of course, with that deck would be a bit of a waste. But on the other side, it'll be doable. There is a Delta Torby build, which is quite interesting with uh, Spanish immigrants as well, where you basically do a timing in H2 and H right behind that, which sounds weird because Toby is always one of those guys who preaches never push when you are aging or about to age. But the idea is you do damage, distract your enemy, make him think you are rushing, make him prepare defenses, and you have a guaranteed age up uh, right behind yourself. So that's a, a semi, a semi ff with an aggressive push not just with raiding or just annoyance but rather you can actually take down some buildings in the enemy's base and so on and so forth but that's just a play that has never been really popularized at least on international tournaments as far as i know yeah and there we see food crates for risotto pause from the summer palace i think here it still gives 400 food yeah that was also nerfed to the last patch that happened earlier and 700 wood also coming in And we actually see pikes from Lionheart. Is it, are we going to... Yes. This actually is the build order that Toby also did. Uh, which is a super fun to see. Because it's a bit different. You, you have a different army composition. And also you have a forward Rex. But not this time. But he is going to take down the village though. And I don't think China can do anything against that. Ah, oh, that is going to hurt. Because now... Risotto is panicking right here. He is, he's building units right. He's sending to canoes and all of that stuff. But right now, Lionheart is in much better position here to fight this than, than China is. And he's going for the right play here, though. He is going for Chokunus, which is the unit you need to counter this specific strategy. You just need to outskirm, basically, your enemy, because all he can do is a bad skirm. All heavy infantry, so decent skirms always win the fight. But if that if the consulate goes down, that that's a major issue for him. Uh, but that's 90 XP, of course, for the Chinese explorer. That's quite hurtful. And quite and quite a lot of XP for for Lionheart on the other side. And now he's going for the General Virginia Assembly. Does he have the coin in his base? No, nope, not yet. But he will probably go for it with the next shipment. Because once he builds that thing, of course, he gets, I think, 300 XP. Yeah. There we go. Should be coin. And that's basically... A... I would argue that the, the build that Toby plays is a little bit more versatile because you have more heavy inf, so more siege. And the timing is a bit harder, but probably also because Lionheart was uh, meant to put his actually his, his military link in front, but I don't know here. His skirms in this position, great decision of course, enables him to fight even a bit longer and just, you know, it's not, it's not a purpose to really force or to, to put the fights up and to really completely destroy your enemy, but the idea is that while you are fighting, while you're using that early tempo that you can get out of that build order, you just annoy and you force the enemy to make units, to be present, to invest in H2 while you take the cheapest path through H2 directly straight up to fast H into H3. And I really I really like the build order here from Lionheart and I generally like the idea that you can do this with the USA as well. It's just time pushing to an FF. I just... Oh, look at that. He is going to get dug into this fight one more time because he does not want to lose this. Ah, uh, Risotto needs to kill this though. Risotto needs to keep on sieging. He's not going to take it down with 53 HP. He needs to, man. Oh, that's terrible. Because look at how much value he got out of this fight.
Imagine. Imagine if that thing actually... He, he can repair it now. He could actually repair it at this point. And he... Oh my god. This... I think this outpost alone might actually decide this entire game if it stays up. And look at that. It is going to stay up. It is going to stay up. And Risotto on the other side. He's now close to aging up too. But how much did he invest? He had tea export. He had both what he had coined. He had the Chocanoose. So he has five shipments down already instead of three. That's two extra shipments just to, to get all of this built up again. And they got their outpost still lives. <laughs> Lionheart on the other side is aging up with New Hampshire. Yeah, he's getting extra XP. So 600, 600 XP. And as I said, two shipments basically ready. The first one is already spent here. 45th Massachusetts Volunteers. You actually saved it. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And those guys are going to be... That's, beautiful, um, that's the beauty of the 45th. It basically upgrades all your vet upgrades for um, regulars and for state militia. Sharpshooters obviously don't have vet upgrades here. Oh uh, yeah, that is just mwah, delicious stuff. The only thing that he's missing is a forward military building, but let's not get too focused on that. Regulars coming out there as well. And that's a good mass. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Right now he has shipment after shipment after shipment. And even if he can't fight this right now, what he can do is just lay back behind the tower and wait for his Gatling cannons. And China won't be able to deal with that quickly. Although, never mind, Confucian Academy is coming out, so skirms are there. Nice pop here. Actually spawning into the front of the village so they can get their shots off. And look at that. We see Risotto immediately going for the hand mortars as a counter to the supposedly soon to arrive Gatling armada here so that is a, a great choice in my opinion at least from risotto he knows what's up and he knows what's coming so seven hand mortars are going to be just the shipment he needs to clean this gatling gun mass or this gatling gun reinforced army he just needs to keep his skirms alive though and bills probably look at that <laughs> that's a straight beeline right to the elephant i think they <laughs> actually teleported more through buildings than actually walked uh, and the cannons are... Ooh, that's a nice spawn again. That's a really nice spawning position in my opinion. Look at that. The first cannon goes down immediately. Oh, and that's that's really good fighting position. But you need to move your skirms, man. You need to move your skirms. Now you are not... Uh, not where you want to be. All the artillery here dying. Oh, will... Yeah, look at that. Split fires. Yeah. Musketeer is basically running circles here, but good circles for the US military. And those guys actually got saved. And the military superiority here is still in favor of Lionheart, in my opinion, at least. I mean, that one sentry getting a few extra hits in, but of course, that house is going to die. And suddenly, China is capped as hell. We only saved three hand mortars because the positioning over here was dangerous. I think. The idea behind it was right, but it put him in a very, very uncomfortable spot once the US Army actually found out what he was doing. Because he had no chance of body blocking any of the army that moved over here, and no way to kill the heavy in fast enough to actually get some meaningful shots out on the Gatling guns. So, uh, this <laughs> is a precarious situation. China is in H3 now, so they should be okay, because China in H3 is always okay. Let me tell you. Well, let's see how this one plays out. And mortars out. And this is this is going to be a hard fight. Risotto needs needs to micro this white. He needs to make sure he gets those cannon down sooner than later. Uh, but he's focusing everything on that one cannon. I don't like it too much. He might be able to actually get it down with that. Yep, the hand mortars do their job. And Lionheart is about to send in the equivalent of a nuke. Because Pulaski's Legion, with that kind, that's that's the army that's on the field. I mean, that's... We have no anti cav Literally six, six red codes is all we have to deny this great switch here from, from Lionheart. I mean, the outpost is going down this time, certainly. But... Ooh, imagine if the fight... If that thing would have come in 20 seconds early or something. 
the entire Occupus Earmars might have been slaughtered, completely butchered at the hands of the German reinforcements. And yeah, I'm saying Germany because, well, that is, of course, a mass of Yulens that we have here. I mean, honestly, those guys are upgraded already to, I think, H3, but with that of a console unit, so there's 10% invoked bonuses on everything. But yeah, those guys just just a menace, especially if you are so hard on if you're so heavy on skirms in this in this situation. I mean we have some Kevna there to body block as well. That might save the day. But with all the heavy infantry behind it, it's gonna be a tough fight if the fight happens. Yeah, discipline meteor hammers coming out so the shipment is there and China just going for China China things China timings look at that hunt is secured so far so we need to make something happen sooner than later because obviously we only have those hunts and those and sooner or later line is going to contest that stuff but I do think that we sort of saw Chuck Golans working their uh, working their way up here and if he did then he at least knows what's coming he has his skirms out, this is artillery in the middle, carved in the south, and he is about to push in. He knows though that he needs to make sure that those guys don't get into his base. So I wonder how he's going to protect from that. He does not have any HP on his units. Brit Consulate of course is making his wills a bit tanky, but that's not going to save you if the Newland Raid goes through your base and takes your head with it. And this is the Siege of the United States. At the Ivory Coast, I guess. <laughs> Cavalry is looking fine, better and better with every second, so that's great because those guys against the Yulans should be actually enough when they come in. Now it's just a matter of positioning, and we have seen some great positioning from Isotto. We also have seen some blunders, to be frank. So this this fight here will certainly show. Ah, I think he's getting out DPS here pretty heavily. He needs to have his anti cav up there but no the guys are getting stuck with it the, the astronaut and actually i think his cav is dying to all of this light flies he only has one red coat there left that's all he has is anti cav ah uh, but ulans are not as tanky of course as the chinese cav so it looks like a draw what a weird thing to say in a position like this everything died just all the cav on the field just went boom after this, and now just skirm versus heavy infant skirm, yes. but just better skirm, I guess. Oh god, a confusing perspective from all sides. But Lionheart is actually going for a rather greedy play here, or at least a more economic play in this position. Blockhouse wagons coming forth, and Risotto on the other side. What is, what is he doing here? <laughs> Zhang Dao's. That's that's a great, <laughs> that's a great choice after the last fight you had. He's also, I think, pretty happy about the Confusion Academy. Of course, you would often prefer to have the uh, Porcelain Tower. But in this situation, honestly, you will need the artillery to, to siege down all that is around here, all the, the infrastructure. Although, of course, that's four, four wood per second is basically eight up unupgraded villages onwards that cannot be raided and can be toggled to other resources immediately. Never ending resources. So I do see the reasoning why Porcelain Tower is overall considered to be the, the better age of option if you can afford it. But look at that. I think this this positioning is um or at least this fighting is very well done by Risotto because he's just focusing the heavy inf. As he has in mind that this time he is the one who has calf left. Because USA is not known for their cavalry masters. Yeah, we don't even have a stable down as far as I can see. Oh, but Minimen are being caught and they're being slaughtered for the cost of basically nothing, I reckon. And that calf mass could be very problematic in a second or so. I mean, look at those boys. Do they have their, their upgrades coming through in a second? So that's going to be 5% more... 50% more hit points, of course, and 5% more armor. Bill's dying here as well. 42 to 31, 30, 31 villages. There we go. My English tongue is getting tired as well, it seems. Yeah, more Kev, more artillery. So I, it looks like China just really heavily regained their momentum after the last fight. And USA just 
didn't. Lionheart is now massing heavy infantry because it does see that there is not a lot of skirmish reinforcements coming in, of course. But I don't know, man. Look, do, you have to look at the gather rate for those villagers, though. I don't think they have steel traps yet because. then the gather it would be much, much higher. Don't forget the Russian company, I think it is. Russian-American company actually gives you 30% 30% gather rate on animals. That is the equivalent of steel traps and hunting dogs on top of each other. So, since we're only slightly better than steel traps, I reckon that the US-American players only, or US player has only researched hunting dogs so far. Yeah. Don't know. I like that too much, but Lionheart actually what is massing name? pretty decent uh, units. Decent, not unit, com not really decent comp uh, composition in my opinion, but a really decent unit mass, and he can always try and poke a bit at his enemy. That shot here, shot there, really enjoying himself in this fight. And Risotto on the other side, he is now, he knows he needs to spam calf, but I think he also needs to reinvest some or at least a little bit of, of resources into some villager. Because just without the villagers, I don't think that he can purposefully finish off those regulars. Because of course the infantry there is strong, uh, the cavalry cleaning, cavalry ability is really... It's strong cavalry units all over the place. I mean, those guys have extra damage against artillery, those guys have extra damage against infantry, but not against heavy infantry. And he somehow needs to deal with all of this. Which I reckon won't be too easy. But yeah, score-wise, Lionheart's still a bit back. And he doesn't really have anything to send here that would purposefully defend him in this situation. So now now the big fight is happening. We see the Cav diving in and the Cav going back and forth, dancing a bit. Just attacking the flank, not full in, a, full in melee with the, with the veteran regulars. Skirm's doing the damage and it looks like Lionheart switches these units to melee combat, but it's not enough. He has lost so many veteran regulars in this fight already. And the cap is just overwhelming the American numbers. And look at that. Just left and right, the American soldiers dying. And that's the GG coming in from Lionheart. Just getting cleaned up by the death wall civilization that is China in this game. GG well played. And honestly, great recovery also from Risotto. But I do think that is, yeah, that is just China's ability. You need to kill them off for dead. And Lionheart just was not able to do this in the, in the fight here. Although he had a lot of great plays overall. And that takes it to 3-2 in favor of the semi-FF gang. So let's see what we're going to have in our game number 6. I know some of you who might be watching this from start till the end might get tired at this point. But believe me if I say I'm tired too, but I will still finish this cast. Let's quickly check resources. I mean, that's pretty telling. And military numbers, of course. I mean, same numbers different population though because i think if we look at military unit population yeah one ninety one to 65 that's that fight went terrible it still went that's the remass of china that's the u.s american remass without any eco in any again so difficult to actually hold that in an open fight gg well played so far to both players and let's hop into the actually into the pre-match screen for us So, uh, extremely balanced, <laughs> extremely balanced match so far if you look at it. We have one win for Risotto, then two losses, and now two wins back to back again. So, it, 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 I mean, we do only have seven games, so there will be a winner at the end of this. But those two players are really giving it their all, and it is damn entertaining to cast. I've got to be honest about that. <laughs> so, wait, that was the wrong one. There we go. Game number six. And fitting enough, it's Siberia as it just came up on the screen. Lionheart again. <laughs> ah, yeah, right. There is a Sif reset. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Uh, I forgot about that part in the in the playoffs. There is a Sif reset after game number five. So Lionheart is now playing USA again on Siberia. And Risotto is actually on the Germans. Interesting pick. Can be difficult to play like that, I think, but 
Let's see how this one works out in the end. So we've got risotto on Germans. And USA from Lionheart again. I will make a short break here, but don't worry, you won't feel any of it because I'm just going to pause the recording. Uh, just due to the fact that I do have bodily needs I need to go to the toilet. There we go. <laughs> I said it. So see you in, I guess, a second. All right, we are back and at it again. Let's see ourselves up to the sixth game of this series. I mean, Risotto versus Lionheart, Demi FF Gang versus Gorgonians, the playoffs. Don't forget, this is a very, uh, very, <laughs> a very decisive series because after this, there's only one more to play and score is pretty darn close, I tell you. So let's get into the game as soon as possible. Go. And in we start. Damn it. <laughs> we lost the prediction that we had throughout the entire series so far. This time, actually, we still see Risotto in the east, but not in the north again. And that means the spell is apparently broken. Risotto with the Germans here on Siberia on the other side, Lionheart. Both sieves. Yeah. Sieves that very much like to FF, right? So on the other side as well, both sieves that um, often are countered by hard rushes in H2. And the fun thing here, in my opinion at least, is that you actively you can't, you effectively can't really rush on this map. Or if you do, it's going to be much slower and at a much higher cost than usually. What am I saying is, of course, Siberia has towers in base for both players. And the distance between the two TCs is not that much greater than other maps, but especially it's basically covered by ice in the middle. The entire map has a frozen over river. And that means that you can either build here or need to move your ass all the way over here. But you need to make sure that you're actually allowed to build this and it's not too close to the starting TC of your enemy. So you see all the issues that can happen when you play on this map. Lionheart beautifully kiting this wood treasure here. And 100 wood goes to Germany, which is going to help a lot with their first trading post site. So he is certainly liking that one. Wilhelm Lederer. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't see it uh, with as much happiness, I guess, that this treasure was taken. But he himself secures a nice 40 wood treasure. Still nothing to scoff at. Bound control to Major John. We know that fellow already. He has been beaten down on pretty severely last game. Not as bad as Shake was beaten down in the first game of the series, but that's a different story. <laughs> USA now. Going again, actually, with the French immigrants. The deck itself is called ECL. So Lionheart's actually made a deck just for us. I love that. <laughs> Risotto on the other side. Yeah, Tournier deck. So pretty much a standard German deck. The only thing that usually, oh, usually sometimes see is instead of the Pandurs, the, the uh, Black Riders, of course, extremely potent and die curve that just works much smoother than the War Wagon would in the same circumstance. Because of obviously the movement animation and then repositioning, kiting abilities and all those things. Speed, none one of the least. But let's see where we go with Germany. Usually what we see is of course a 70 village up and I think we're going to get the same here. Yeah, pretty much. If you get some good treasures of course you can get a 16 village up which especially for Germany is really really beneficial just because you age up faster and therefore can react faster to anything the enemy does. If you need to react to it at all, because if you just go to age, uh, age three without anything, that's still fine for Germany in many situations. Depending, of course, on the enemy sieve. And against USA, I personally actually would be hard pressed to decide which sieve has the better FF in this situation. I honestly, I can't tell. You guys in the comments, please help me out if you, because in the comments, uh, I often get taught a thing or two, but. At least in my opinion, I would not be able to tell that clearly. Mr. Leder, <laughs> making sure that his US American fella does not interrupt his building process of the trading post. Oh, you weren't supposed to get that. <laughs> well. That's a shame, of course. But don't forget, Luzotto is one score ahead, one point ahead. And this, it's not match point. 
precisely. But it is um, uh, this match decides if the Gojonians or the semi FF gang goes home with a point. Oh, to be more precise, this match decides if um, the semi FF gang can even be stopped from taking home a point, right? Because even if, if just just for the argument's sake, if Rizotto wins this one game, then he already has a certain point that he's going to take home. Uh, and Lionheart on the other side, of course, he needs to win both games to make sure that the Gajonians can actually take score lead again in the ECL. Wilhelm Lederer. Yeah, sorry, uh, that, the name is just cracking me up. I don't know. It's just probably probably the standard name for the guy. But yeah, can't keep smiling. Can't stop me smiling. Honestly. There we go. Steel traps coming in for the German player. Obviously, we have the pre-settler wings first. I wonder what military building he's going to get. Hello? Yeah, it looks stable, I reckon. No? Looks like he's not going to go. Oh, there we go. Stable it is. So, we are going to see classic German build order right there. Namely, the, the CAF, semi FF. Depends. Can be. The, the, the thing with Ulens is, I mean, for most of you, probably know, Ulens are very non-tanky <laughs> they're really squishy units but at the same time when they hit you they hit you like a mm, yeah pretty damn strong units to to quickly swoop in kill something and get out again without being seen and if they are seen well for germany at least they are free anyways so also of course in this situation they just make it much easier to take down treasures and to get more value out of your scout on the map after you build your tc uh your first tp and that's rather important so there goes a coin treasure right for the German player. And with an extra house in base, you should be able to make a full batch of Ulans. Yeah, there we go. And the thing is, raiding on this map is also a bit harder than usually because, of course, the tower is a building that you can garrison your village villages in. So it's not like this coin mine is an issue when it comes to protecting your villages. You can just put them inside the tower and make sure they don't get slaughtered at the front because they have to walk back all that distance over there. But of course, if you have anything in the back, yeah, there we see them being chased. That might be mighty uncomfortable if you get caught out there. And I don't know, I mean, Lion is going straight, straightest way for the FF. I think he's... Did he send 700 coins? No, he didn't even send 700 coins, so he's just going to go straight forward. Oh. Yeah. Those Zulans down here getting a bit slaughtered, but he's actually going to take down a village, I think. Nope, never mind. Those are... French stop villages, <laughs> so to speak. And those guys are actually perfect at defending themselves from raids. I think that one settler, we might still see that lady go down at some point, but for now at least she's safe, breathing, and still gathering resources. And yeah, don't forget, those guys are, I think we do have Yeah, we we have ranged resist on those guys actually now, but they are also a bit faster and just a bit tankier. Because the HP upgrade is not on them already. It's Hello. still just from the French immigrants. Which we do not tend to see that often anymore nowadays. Deadly. Yeah, and as I said, garrisoned into the tower. So that is not a lot of damage that can be done, actually, with, with those Ulans here right now. Let's take a quick look at Risotto's point of view. He is actually getting Silversmith on this map. Interesting choice. It is a very economic decision. But the idea is that he has, I think, 20% more gather yield from mines. Yeah. So that means... Out of that coin, for example, 2,000 coin in there, he gets 2,400 now. Which for Germany can be rather rather good, actually. But it is a very greedy ship. So it is going to... I think you send it... Yeah, you send it instead of 700 coin. And that is more of a long-term investment. Your gather rate, of course, is also going to be juiced up. If you look at that, that's 90... Oh, 0.9 uh, gather rate per second. Meaning that he is going to have a great time with his economy. But it has to, it, it does have to work for some time to really pay off. You have to imagine that's 10%. Is, so one, uh, yeah, basically 0.12, I think. 0.12 resource, resources per second per gatherer. So it does take some time to pay off the 700 resources. That in theory the card should be worth to be worth uh, the investment in H2. But for Germany even more because but you do get Ulans with that, right? Yeah. 
but at least that's not an issue but yeah risotto already hurting over here putting some new houses down now hitting h3 just a bit yeah say 20 seconds later than lionheart lionheart actually going for the four that looks like are we going to see their minutemen strategy that's the question oh god Nox artillery train heavy fortifications oh that does not look good that does not look good for risotto I mean, he has two TPs, but oh, ho, ho, ho. he he thinks he's playing against an FF, but that is that does not look like 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 any FF I've ever seen. If you <laughs> beg my pardon, I mean, look at that! All those resource ups are coming through. Yes. Villages gathering rather fast here as well because they have amalgamation on them already, and it's just. Not even that many villages, right? But they're all being called back here and all being put on the berry bushes yes. now. With a terrible get with an absolutely terrible gather rate. Order. It doesn't matter. The point is that Risotto wasted a bit of his timing on producing Ulans and did not straight go for the FF. I mean straight FF with Germany is a bit questionable. That too. But against the Sif they can straight FF and can straight FI with all equal upgrades that you're going to need in your entire life for natural resources at least it is a bit of a risky play at least in my books let's see yeah he, like, i like that from line too he is playing it really safe because having even five villages up here could cost you the game in parley if you just lose too much in this transition then the german player just goes boomy uh and fights you with a bigger h3 mass if he can or he's also Risotto just seems to, to uh, he wants to push, but it's going to be an awkward push into this, I imagine. Sending a thousand, yeah, look at that. 255 HP now with 20% ranged. That is better than the stats you're going to get, uh, except for the range resist on a CDB. Just just pointing that out, leaving that kind of information there. And he's taking down one house. Oh. Never mind, a second one. So he is actively housing USA, but it doesn't matter because there we see the Gatling guns come out and they actually get a few shots off. Risotto, I mean, the German player, he needs to know. He, I'm pretty, I'd say I'm 100% sure that he knows what's coming up now. So he should be probably dropping a TC or something. Or aging himself, I don't know what he's up for. But he needs to get the situation under control because he has very short timing to act against this. And Lionheart is known for turtle strategies like this. I have seen him play, I think I actually cast it on my own channel a game of Lionheart playing versus either Ezard or Lucas L or something. With Mexico doing an exact same turtle build, turtle into FI, into revolution. Um, and then he just spammed anti care units. It also demolishes skirms back in the days. So Californios or whatever they were called back then. It was goddamn hilarious. He lost it in the end, but that's just because of uh, the player he was back then. And also the fact that he was playing against Hello. one of the best German players ever. So, nah, you see where I'm getting it. Orders? Uh, what yes. I wouldn't. What I wanted to point out by this is that Lionheart is very, <laughs> very goddamn comfortable in H4. With, oh yeah, look at that. There he goes. Heavy fortifications first, California gold rush, the town centers. He's going to Ottoman the shit, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, and he's just going to make sure that he pumps up his new numbers behind as many fortifications as he can put up. And now he's even building, yeah, more TC wagons. So he is going to turtle his life uh, for his life. And look at that. He's also, I did sadly miss this part, but he actively actually went for uh, artillery, meaning that he has the means to siege this down. In theory, in practice, that thing has more range than he does. 26, so uh, at least the same. And when the heavy fortifications come in. Oh, there we go. Fortified outpost. That four now has 32 range and 200 damage. That's a lot of damage, you would say. Yes, you would, right, you would be right to say that, honestly. <laughs> because, look at that. I don't know how many fucks you have to put on that to kill it if it's just the fort fighting you. If the fort also has Gatling guns next to it, that's 
you see the issue. <laughs> it's a bit. And to say it's annoying to to uh, deny this or to kill that or oh, it's a bit of an understatement. Yeah. But there comes the next covered wagon for for Lionheart, and he's now going for four calves, of course. And after that, California Gold Rush. So he postponed his his boom card actually. Why? Well, of course, if you have five of those guys and a few more calves on the field against yourself, you need to make sure that that sub just doesn't straight up kill you, even if a defensive position like that. And he could pressure the northern side where there's no fault that takes him down over time. Score looking a bit difficult, of course, but don't forget Lionheart has did send a card that improves his score quite considerably, even if it's even though it's not as bad as it used to be. Ah, ah, oh, that hurt so much. That was great. Micro Spitfire, or oh, great uh, cannon Spitfire here from the Carls from Lionheart, taking out two of the enemy's Colorins and therefore enabling him to actually take this fight if it were to happen uh, against all that artillery from the German player. Yeah, and we see more towers coming out. More. Oh, God. This this is going to be so. Oh. This is going to be a slaughter, isn't it? Because I usually. There's not a lot of player players that I would fully entrust fighting this heads on and winning, you know. And now we have 40 Cs auto spawning villages the entire time. Also outpost wagons. More, more and more. At least the walls are not that hard, uh, not that well upgraded for them. But it does matter because every piece of essential infrastructure can easily be cleaned, uh, can easily be reproduced by the state capital. And look at that, the fight is happening. And I'm pretty sure that Germany is not in a position to fight this. Oh, look at this. That was a really, really sweet escape there, though. Oh. And there go both culves on one shot. One culve only from... Yeah. The culve war was decisively won by Lionheart. Two more. That's a thousand resources. That there because those guys wanted to go along with their friends and did not take the detour to the north. Hurts, of course, as hell. And yeah, USA is now very confident in the spot in the line. I mean, look at that. More outposts coming out everywhere. There we go, there we go. That thing is 3,000 HP. We also got 60 damage and flash damage. And <laughs> it's siege damage. So that does not count for any of their resistances. Can also take cannons if they're positioned poorly. So, yeah, you see where this is going. On the other side, we've got 37 villagers from Isotto. He pushed while aging up. I'm not going to comment on that. We talked about it in the last game. <laughs> but yeah, he he should be ready to, to get some mortars out now and take this down or to get some sort of economic superiority. Right. There's a TC going up over here. The question is, is it too late? Right. Because now we see the full turtle mode being activated over here in Lionheart's base. He's on 36 villages because why not? He's also producing mills like it's houses. Orders? How much does that thing cost right now? They can't tell. But yeah, those things are just going to set up his entire economy, making sure that he doesn't need to, you know, get on mundane things that, like deer or something. No, no, no. He can just do mills, right? He can just do plantations and all that stuff. Oh, sorry, estates. On the other side, of course, we've got factories coming out. Do we have factories from the USA already? No, not a single one. Well, I guess he wanted to put all the other stuff up first, but we'll probably... Yeah, there we go. We see his two, his two uh, factories coming in. We also see two factories coming in for Germany. So, yeah, a pretty clear picture that is being painted here. Both players now going for economic superiority. And, yeah, that's going to be artillery rating. I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> I feel like war wagons, a war wagon heavy composition could deal with this on the one side. On the other side, well, that's the last hurt that Risotto has on the map. And he might not have seen it. Oh, well, those guys are probably all running over there now. But he needs to transition still. Look at Lionheart, right? In comparison, that guy has his army, he has his defensive capabilities up, and factories, and of course, mills. And did I mention that he spawns villages for free already? I did? Well. Just pointing it out again to keep you reminded of the fact that Germany is not just on a timer, is on a timer, 
and uh, I think the timer is now has surpassed the point where it's supposed to ring and every continuous second that Germany can't make anything happen in this matchup it's going to get worse for Germany I'm ready. because they're that German booming is just not going to be as strong or as fast. I mean, don't get me wrong. The fact that those villagers get it with 0 0.9 resources per second is great and all. Hmm? But is it enough? That is the question. And 48 villagers, a 4 and 7 fortified outposts currently are hard to argue with. Germany is now getting their upgrades as well, right? Because... Of course, Germany needs to yeah build another town center and soon transition to uh, resource buildings instead of natural resource. I mean, that hunt in the middle here, they say, I don't know if those guys will ever be touched, honestly. We see more wars coming down from Lionheart. He, he is taking it seriously over here. He also got another war HP upgrade. And he's getting more artillery and he's getting more cavalry, so... Calves actually on age 4 level already. Yeah, and 52 villages now versus 55 actually. So Germany is able to keep keep up with the with the numbers of the opponent. But on the next side, guard war wagon 650 HP. Strong, incredibly strong unit. But don't forget, veteran skirms here. Those guys are still hellish expensively to upgrade. Risotto now himself, also he gets the ups for uh, the Culverins. He knows that the artillery war is what's going to decide this this next clash of, of forces. And this might be a bit weird to watch because it, this get, it gets this kind of feeling of an NR20, right? <laughs> Where you don't really fight before that and that minute mark. Did he just kill that one guy? Ah yeah, probably for, for unit production, right? Ah, oh, yeah, for one calf, I reckon. Oh, and where is it? Yeah, there it is. So, hot air balloon coming out, scouting everything, every single thing. Scouting the factory, both factories, scouting the second TC. And now Lionheart basically just getting up all the intel he can get from this situation. He knows where to pressure if he needs to. He knows this. And now the fight is on. Germany is on there. And he's just... I mean, he doesn't even need those builds, right? He's now still in 55 villages versus 63. He has all the ups that he needs. All three. The walls are still there. And it's going to take Germany one hell of an eternity to get those fortified outposts down. And that's with two Falconets and two Cobbs in the back, right? So it's going to take him a long, long time to get this done. Good thing though, he just got his ups on the war wagons. The range upgrades are there. That's necessary to fight the musketeers of uh, the USA musketeers. And USA just doesn't care. He knows where he wants to go. He knows where he needs to go because that's those two, those factories are his goal. That's where he wants to push, I reckon. And it really comes up to is Risotto going to see it in time? And now, look at that. That's the point of view you don't want, ever want to see when your army is somewhere, literally in the tundra, <laughs> doing shit and all, and there's just the US invasion in your base. Well, unfortunate for Germany. And yeah, that factory is, is basically gone. You can already tell that before anything even happens. Yeah, all the villes are evacuating. He... He's even looked at that. Guard Minutemen slowing down the reinforcements that try to prevent the downfall of the of the German industrial complex. But that is not a chance in hell that Lionheart is going to let go. And those Yulins are basically just dead meat in a mincer. I mean, look at that. You can barely say they died in combat because they were killed before their first hit. So I don't know, man. And one sad little fag connect coming in and that guy is not going to have a good time. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> all the calves being right on top of him and just you know that uh, the next factory is going to go down if he wants it or not of course guard war wagons have great units but they are not that great and not in that situation there are not enough skirms the artillery is going to die but it's not the artillery that's going to take down the factory and I don't know how great the fighting capabilities against infantry is in this situation 
Hulls are coming out. That might be still good to save the day here against the artillery. But he needs to move them around quickly. And the factory is not going to survive. Look at that. There we go. And now the infantry is back in the fight. And even, even now, after losing all that army, even if he loses it without doing a single hit more uh, of damage more, Lionheart did a great job. <laughs> he permanently hurt the German economy. And that's something they won't be able to recover from. Yeah, and look at that. Still taking down war wagons. Just the value of that, that push right there. Even if he's behind his score now. 75 villagers, 76 on the other side. His army being deleted, he does not need to care. Lionheart sending in the Kovats Legion, so Magia Hussars. Quite fitting that. <laughs> Quite fitting that, that the German Empire shall be ended by uh, Austrian Hungarian units. But... And Guard Wing to Sars, even more reinforcing cavalry. But this time from his auto, I mean, they are there. That's that's what they are. That's about it. That's all you can say about them because they are not going to do a lot. They they are not going to have any big purpose or benefit to the German army here. And just look at the beasts that are the Magia Hussars. Where are those guys? Yeah, there we go. A thousand HP each. Yeah, with forty-eight attack. Okay, so that's not too great attack-wise, but just the. Your tanking potential those guys bring to the field. I mean, that a war wagon does 195 damage right now. Now, five war wagons do not one shot one Kovac, but cost about the same. Just you, you get the image, right? And there come the reinforcing batches. But yeah, Lionheart, Germany does not even have the ability. A sheer, just a mess to actually counter all of that taking down the entire artillery mass line had to just sacrifice his entire army has a school lead again there's still more us on the field more magia hussars and risotto is, is hard pressed to get army out he doesn't even know where to begin i think because the guard regulars are just that cost efficient at this point especially in comparison with the artillery behind it and they don't need to trade evenly, not even population-wise, because 90 villages on the US side versus 83 on the German side. Settler wagons, okay. Those are not included in the calculation, but at the same time, he, he doesn't really... Look at that, the, f the first front outpost coming up here. Lionheart used his momentum to gain a permanent advantage over germany here over risotto and i don't know if risotto can make a fight happen that is going to be good enough that he can deny usa's victory here and lionheart just that was if he was i know he streamed this and i think when he killed both factories he was probably laughing his ass off and deservedly so to be honest <laughs> because especially late game that is such a deadly blow and yeah, he doesn't need to do too much, right? It's it's Germany's responsibility to push here. And now we're just seeing reinforce, uh, yeah, better unit upgrades and all that. Rifle infantry getting the ups. Factories. He can basically he can even go and, and just train more Magia Hussars if he wants to. Lionheart is in a perfectly fine position. The only thing I don't understand is why we're producing food. Risotto cheetah. What? <laughs> I mean, the coin, that, that's the next issue, right? You remember that I said uh, those upgrades here can be good, silversmith and so on. Now is the timing when they start not being that great anymore because obviously their bonus only counts towards the silver mines themselves. So uh, those 20% gather rate obviously does not apply to the estate, meaning we are back to 0 08 gather rate with all the ups that you can have. And Risotto is just booming like crazy, trying to, to get the eco back that he needs to, to fight this spot. Yeah, we see sharpshooters now coming out, and that's guard sharpshooters. 27 damage. 3.1 times the damage against it. Yeah, look at that. Down. That's 300 resources. And... That's 300 resources. Oh, no, nah, that was a bit too fast. I'm sorry. 
But yeah, you see the issue. He's even going for all of those upgrades. And honestly, that those upgrades are absolutely freaking great. Because now Warwagons have a higher attack speed if he gets the right one. Didn't, but what? The only good thing for Germany fighting defensively like this is that the inspiring flag cannot be placed too close to the starting TC. Oh, never mind. There's a TC. <laughs> you don't need a flag. He can just put down Fort Laramie right in front of the German base. I, I, that, then the heavies up there. Just, oh my god. And Germany is evacuating their western front it looks like and it's it's oh it hurts to see this play out i mean because risotto is actually close in score right even though lionheart has a lot of inflated score so germany should be in an okay spot but not for fighting this there's n he needed to swap to to skirm units i guess at some point here because there's no anti-infantry anymore on the field heavy cannons are coming in though they might be able to do the trick if micro correctly, but there's still three calves in there. Uh, and the TC here, it's bound to go down and there's... At least there's no villagers in there, but look at the fight that's being taken here. That's the rest of the German army and there's not a lot he can do to reinforce here. Oh, never mind, there's veteran Ulan right in front of the skirms, on top of the skirms. But look at that. Lionheart is now basically an autopilot. He's the only thing he is actively monitoring here is the culver in Rial. And now he's trying to save them. A great pop of Yulins actually. Might be able to get down a culve. Ah, but the culves get their shots off first. And there goes the first heavy cannon. And the second one as well. And I think that's the point Risotto has to resign this one. Yeah, the last wall swagons going down. Okay, I can't win yet. <laughs> That's it. GG, well played. A really weird one. A lot of waiting in the mid game, but uh, the fighting back and forth there made it up. Look at that. Germany actually out ecoed Lionheart. Obviously, with a villager population. We'll check that in a second. But that's the, that's the difference. Unit numbers. Military unit population. Look at that. Risotto dropped into the fight and just lost about all of it. Then he remasked, fought again, and really dwindled Lionheart down, actually. Then again, lost the thing, and then the situation was kind of lost for him entirely. Villager population, he was always ahead. Considerably, actually. I have to check um, how many how many war, uh, settler wings we actually have on the field there, but Jesus Christ. All resources gathered. Yeah, well, USA came close. Shipments. And military score is pretty, yeah, that's coming as well. But let's quickly check how many of those we have. If I still can, 78 normal bills and 11. Where did he send another one? Ah, yeah, those. Those six, okay, that makes sense. But GG to both players again. And guys, that means we got ourselves a tiebreaker in the end. The seventh game is actually going to be the one that decides... What team is going to go home with a point from this series, actually? Because we've got semi of Gang, of course, and Gajonians fighting it out in the playoffs here. I'm, I'm excited to see who wins this, honestly. Because uh might sound stupid or not, because I cast one of the playoffs, but I cast the one before this, if I'm not mistaken. I casted uh, Toby versus Passy, which was a delight, although I might have been a bit harsh on Passy sometimes. <laughs> But the point is, I actually did not look up what the score was in the end. For neither team nor players in this thing right here. So I actually don't know how this works out. So let's see. <laughs> let's see in the end. And of course, we've got uh, USA this time with a win. And now that I think about it, that's my issue. I don't know what their main mains are, right? So 
I'm really hard pressed to predict the last matchup, especially with a Sif reset after this. That's the last match. I guess we'll just have to find out. Ah, Scandinavia was the last map, so a water map. And we see USA again on the one side from Risotto. And on the other side, we actually see Lionheart playing the Ottomans again. He won the first Ottoman game, if I'm not mistaken, in the same matchup, actually. So Risotto has a chance to redeem himself here, or... Lionheart has a chance to establish auto dominance in this situation, matchup and player, uh, Civ matchup and player matchup. So, I'd say, why don't we get started with this, shall we? All right, here we go. And this time again, <laughs> at least. Who's also started in the northeast again for the last game. So we, we got all things back in order. That I like. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, to start with, of course, Scandinavia. A bit of a particular, well, an odd map because of the starting features. You do not start with a hunt in base. You start with blueberries. Also more blueberries all over the map. Some hunts over here, but more blueberries here. And the interesting thing about that is that the blueberry bushes usually you gather them a bit faster, but not as fast as a hunt, obviously. Here you find a treasure that lets you gather faster from them, meaning that you basically have a normal gather rate that you would have with any normal hunt anymore. So you can actively get your age up just from these blueberry bushes. Uh, the only issue with them is that that thing has only 200 food in it, so you are going to run out pretty damn quickly. But then again, all of those bushes have normal gather rates, so that is something you have to think about. If any of you are saying, oh, why not play Japan, blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. Japan does not get the tech here or does not get the treasure. I don't even know if in a team game they would be able to, to pick it up. But as far as I know, it's pretty damn impossible to get them that higher gather rate from berry bushes, which makes a lot of sense, right, in a map like that. Now, French immigrants again, this time from Risotto. So they're really liking that build order. It was more meta then because I think they made it a bit more expensive in the last patch and buffed a lot of other stuff. And risotto, no, nine hearts, sorry. Going for a hundred food, which is very tasty for an Ottoman player in any situation. Steady not going for the dock start, which Ottoman certainly can, but deciding against it here. Uh, Three villages coming up. One we want water, so he does have a water deck. Schooners on the field, all the other stuff. Uh, palace intrigue and... Yeah, we got all of that going. Let me take just a quick look. And it's not one of those nasty FI decks, but he has the Mamoidi, um, the mighty battleship of Ottoman. Inflict more damage at the expense of a lower, slower rate of fire. Just to... I, I compared the stat ones, uh, the stats ones, with a normal battleship for other sieves. And in comparison to a normal battleship, the Ottoman battleship actually does more damage over time. So the DPS is higher. Just if you kite back and forth, so only one shot and then you move back and another shot and so on and so forth, then you actually get uh, less damage out. So that is something you have to think about. Standing and firing, it's a better unit overall. No questions asked. What treasure are we going to get here? 50 XP and 50 wood for our boy Lionheart coming for you. You see, I did not catch that reference the first time I, I saw Risotto play USA, but now I see it and I love it. <laughs> I'm not going to go to... No, no. I'll keep out of politics. The whole racism discussion was enough for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, USA and... Of course, USA and Ottoman both both against civs that are very potent in FF situations, in FI situations, in any tempo related uh, situations. I do feel like Ottoman has the better economic potential, just with all the cards they have to make the units cheaper, better, stronger, faster uh, in training time as well as in movement speed and all that. Attack animation for bow riders again. That's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with Ottoman military, especially if the game goes on for longer. So, um, I 
think that USA is the save that needs to needs to take Ottoman down or the, the yeah needs to take the Ottoman player down here just to ensure that he actually survives this because I do think in the latest of late games I do think that the Ottoman composition would be favored here but please if you disagree let me know in the comments generally speaking if I you know for days long this cast has been going on for two and a half hours now if I say anything that comes off as profoundly wrong incredibly stupid or something like that feel free to correct me or to just uh, point that out in the comments I'm always thankful for stuff like that the fun thing here is 4 minutes 39 and we are seeing an Ottoman FF coming out almost immediately so that guy is going to be up before 6 minutes I reckon depending on what age up he chooses of course at this point I have to quickly pause again but we will be back in a second don't worry and here we are again. Sorry for the short interruption. That was just uh, my human nature again acting up, I guess. Let's continue this this best of no, not series of seven, right? And that is the final game, three, two, three. So this one takes it all. It, it's not going to be a lot, right? One point, whoever wins this. But in the end, it's still a goddamn point. And both teams need that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, after this, I'm going to quickly talk to you about the standing. So... Before the last game between Nixon and Gibson, Nixon and Gibson, Nick and Gibson comes up, uh, so you know what you've got to expect, right? How close is it really right now? Risotto is a bit slower here with his USA, actually. He is also deciding to stay on the blueberries because he's not, he hasn't gone for any, uh, any, un yeah, no, no market ups, no market at all. So that, of course, means that he goes a lot lower than his Ottoman counterpart, I guess. No, never mind. They both are fully on natural resources but without any ups. So they just want to get to H3 a bit faster. Uh, we see Minutemen being annoying all over the map because that is what they can do. Oh, my God. Lionheart. You... And I mean it as friendly as I can say, but you bastard. <laughs> we He actually, good for his otter that he scouted this because Lionheart... Marksman, he could have really, really messed up his day if that was not found early enough. Risotto now aging as well. Thankfully, the Virginia, uh, Virginia General Assembly is already on its way, meaning that with this card, he can what is your speed up his age up. So he should more or less match Lionheart's. Uh, I'd say 20 seconds more, something like that. Let's not get too far into technicalities here. I wonder where the drop off spot is going to be for those uh, Avis gunners. Because the Marksman is, of course, four Avis, as we found out in the second game. Uh, it is going to be here. So he, he is taking the risk and he is going all in aggression right into Risotto's face. Taking down one Minuteman. Taking down the next. Ooh, that was nice. Actually, slowing down the units with his Explorer. Yeah, I guess if I say that now out loud, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, full out aggression from the Ottoman player. And as I said, not much space between the two players. State capital just taking half of the age of time off the age to the, the age up to the third age. So really good synergy. And this time, I think he hit his mark much better than the last time we saw the last time that anybody played USA. I can't remember if that was... I think it was... Lionheart, but not in the last game, but the game before that, if you remember, <laughs> on the Ivory Coast. Oh, is he actually... Ah, no, he's just walling. I thought he was going to wall in uh, our Explorer here, but nope, he's not. He's sending military. Lionheart on the other side started off with Spahi. Dipahi, as they are now called first, actually. He stacks a lot of... He's stacking a lot of shipments, though, so I'm, I'm not too sure about his stance there, about his position. Risotto reacting the right way though. He has a lot of skirms on the field. Just a little bit of anti-cav. So uh, those veteran carbon cavalry units, they, they are really necessary in this situation. I mean, look at the score though. We just saw it go up 2,000 points, which makes a lot of sense because Sipoy are rated for 280 food per unit. I think, did they make them cheaper? I thought they were 300 back in the day, but must have been my imagination though. Oh, look at that. They are in the trap. Those those guys should go in melee sooner or later. Yep. Splitting up. That's good. Might still lose all. All of his skirms here. 
Ah, because he focused the wrong unit, unfortunately. But I think the spies are still going to die here. And I think it was the bigger... Should have been a bigger waste. If we look at the score, Lionheart, Lionheart should have been the one. Yeah, I think he lost more in this attempt because the party are just the unit you don't get back. So this extremely, extremely strong uh, temporary military spike. I think, yeah, I think he wasted that because villager numbers, for example, 20 to 22. That is not too bad. And now a heavy anti care reinforcement and more skirms behind it. So USA is now right in the spot they want to be. They're just pumping out numbers, shipment for shipment. Uh, and I don't see how Lionheart, militarily speaking and economically speaking, recovers from this loss, honestly. And those guys, as we saw, he's just going to utilize those elite Apache cavalry, uh, Apache cavalry. Ah, they don't got the modifier, do they? They. Uh, I was just thinking about the game of Mexico where they actually get their, their modifier against villagers and are a superb raiding unit. But of course, there was an H4 shipment. Yeah, take look at that. Lionheart is just getting taken. Yeah, he is just being torn apart here by Carbine Kevin Melee, out of all things. Skirms behind, minimum behind. And that front base is pretty likely to die. Two fight connects are on their way though. Again, up is also there. We need an in, yeah, in base barracks is on the way. That's for sure. I hope the fight, I hope for Lionheart's sake that the fight connects do not spawn at the front. If those guys spawn at the front, ooh, that could be juicy. Oh, Jesus, that that could have been um, that could have been GG, I guess, right there, right then there. Yeah, his wills are now up there. Still no gather upgrades, but a second TC, so he is thinking of that. I, with that TC, he could actually take water. Yeah. Basically Portuguese stuff. Yeah, and uh, uh, I don't know. Those units were kind of a waste, but at least he got the upgrade through. And now, of course, he is double producing villages. Do we have a mosque anywhere, or are we bound to the... Uh, yeah, 25. The settle limit or the build limit is still 25. That might take him some time to get that done. But yeah, look at the score. That's oh, Jesus. That's that's grim. I mean, that's almost 50% score lead already. Lionheart now forced to send uh, send Janissaries. So he has some some army behind that. If artillery is coming in from his auto next. He's in a bad, bad spot. Because those, I think that rolling artillery could just make short work of any any units that that Lionheart can field right now. And oh, jeez, he, he's pushing on the left side where there's a lot of hills, but no TC apart from that side. Would have been much smarter to position his his villages over there because that's one. That's probably two or three villages going down in the entire fight. Yeah, and look at that risotto being an ass <laughs> a very efficient ass at that just meleeing the units slowing them down putting the snare effect to good use and making sure that he gets as much damage as them as probably i mean he could have easily taken out those as well but of course the safe option is to pull out before you lose your entire cap and get ambushed by five delhi and just die <laughs> yeah i hope that Lionheart remembers early enough to upgrade this because with two TCs that that limit has reached quite fast and I plan? think his only way to come back into this game is the, the economic way to be honest and yet Portuguese style water that was what I wanted to say before here he could just dock this and had would have he could have a very secure spot to to uh, pump out extra villages oh yeah oh that's a good spot though that's I, I like the position here one shot coming off Minutemen being called, they are just enough to, to keep the force here engaged, all the anti cav I love the positioning here from Lionheart. I think that was very, very clean. Especially because, honestly, the Apaches just going in there like that, that was extremely risky. But now he needs to pull up his gens, otherwise he is in the risk of uh, losing that advantage. And basically, the tides turning and just the anti cav rushing into the artillery here. That's... Uh, now we are getting into dangerous territory again. <laughs> Lionheart... I mean, if anybody can pull of a hole like this, if anybody can come back from this situation, it's probably him or Ace, but you know what I mean. But uh, I just, I, I think Risotto just has such a huge advantage here. If he just keeps on 
getting his important ops and then, you know, not falling behind economically, then he should be in a decent spot. Oh, that that second hit was huge. So that second hit was huge. Sounds stupid, I know, because nobody died, but a lot of splash damage has been added for a shot that usually would not do any damage at all. I think whenever I cast, usually I don't see that that rolling cannon uh, cannonball damage that much, but it, somehow in these games you just see so much, you know, cannonball flying, hitting one guy, that guy dies, all right, and then it hits the next five and they roll over as well. Um, that is just something that I don't usually see too much in, or at least don't pay too much attention to. Here it says the splash damage of this of the rolling cannonball has been huge in these last few engagements here. Or in his last few games, at least, we saw that that's being trained. A thousand coin for Ottoman. Mamluks is an interesting choice against this... Uh, against that kind of a cavalry mass, though. I, I'm not too confident. I must say, I'm not too confident in this. But, village numbers are at least coming up. So, we see Yorix being trained. Coin over here. He has his... Yeah, his, his, uh, his economy migrated over to the eastern side. Still gathering here, but also has his military there, so it's not that unsafe as it was before. And we also see the US player having to rely on other resources outside of his base. Obviously, I mean, there's still a bit... A small bunch of moose there, that's all good, but... One more thing I want to point out here with the natives, with the Oldenburgs, right? We've got some interesting things here. The villagers and fishing boats get a small amount of coin whilst hunting and fishing. Uh, great technology. Sounds a bit expensive, obviously. But it does pay off over time. Cality of repeaters. If you fight against skirmishers, uh, skirmishers, they get a 10% damage bonus against other skirms. And those royal hunters can be made into actual fighting units that get an additional bonus on skirm. So it's... A, it's an ass, if you remember that. Then. Well, I'm talking too much. The fight is going on. And Lionheart is caught off guard. God damn it. There's artillery in the back. Jen's tanking like crazy. But this Falconet here oh, is probably about to get sniped too. And if he loses that, and if he loses the villagers here, I don't know what he can do to stay in game, honestly. He's got one Falconet here. That's all that saves him in this situation. If Oh, two more Falconets in the back. Depending on how well his units tank, he might actually be able to survive this. Artillery focusing villages, which is a raid, okay, but it's not good to, to, to diminish this army. And I think Risotto is taking heavy losses here for no reason. Even with the reinforcing batches, the gens are just too tanky to get actively to, to get killed fast enough by the artillery on the US side. And the positioning is just better for Lionheart. Sounds weird. But it might might actually win him the fight or just make him not lose too hard. <laughs> And Lionheart is doing a much better job at focusing the essential artillery that keeps this fight that keeps this fight interesting for both sides. Look at that. Skirm's tanking heavy damage. And the score is... Nah, I just wanted to say it's creeping in a better position for, for the Ottoman player, but it's... I think that would have been a bit too, too, too much of an assumption here, because if we look at the score, it's still at at that 50k, 50% uh, ahead mark, I guess. So <laughs> Lionheart still not in the best of spots, but honestly, for an engagement where it was that heavily outnumbered, um, I would not have suspected at any point that it could have gone that, that well for him. It was really, really impressive that he actually survived that. And he's getting more artillery out. If he trains one Imam instead of the one Jan, he might actually be able to heal the Falcon up. That could have could be a lot of value right there. And of course, the six Nizam sounds like a stupid shipment. But the fact that those guys can counter anything, literally anything, that's, you know, if you don't know the unit, then uh, it's hard to explain. But you just switch, uh, you switch their stances there, the way that they uh, position themselves. And that changes the multiplier modifier. So uh, right now, they are actively countering with 20 range, nothing. But in melee, of course, cav heavily, right? Uh, 20 range, that's a musketeer unit that has the same stats as a veteran janissary. And they also benefit from all their upgrades. So, you can switch it to counter infantry. You can switch it to counter artillery. You can switch it to counter inf... Uh, no, uh, cavalry, of course. Not in range, I think, but that will probably see soon enough. 
Lionheart just needs to make this fight happen in a way that's good for him, if that makes sense. Look at that. That's all All cannonballs rolling on, getting more and more value. If one nerdish thing, if I can request one nerd thing in this game, then I would love to see like a kill counter or a damage counter on single units. Wouldn't make any sense because they die pretty fast, but if like artillery, to see that that unit has already done so and so much damage in resources, for example, that would be huge. By the way, that bank is rebuildable, so it's nice to get it down, but you can actually rebuild in the state capital, which I find hilarious as hell, but also unfair. <laughs> but yeah, my, my opinion about uh, USA is probably an open secret after these few casts here. But Lionheart's just hanging on, really, by... by clawing his way back into the game, I guess, just on the back of... I mean, that's weird, right? Because Lionheart is usually known for strategies that are really far out. Far, far out of the borders of the normal meta that you see in games. And now, what is he doing to survive here? He's playing Hus uh, Musk Arty, Gen Arty. So, just, just, I just wanted to point it out. So, let's see. Those guys are still on damage range. Oh, look at that. Mmm, those shots. And now the score is actually getting better for him. Now the artillery fight is on, and one thing I have to criticize about Risotto, that his artillery skills have not been on point in this game so far. Oh, 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 Lionheart needs a good shot here in the calves. Yeah, and look at that. Calf War 1, now it's just artillery. He needs to keep all his stuff back here. Can kill those cannons, certainly for free, if he just shoots now. Ah, misses his timing though. Oh, jeez. And now, actually, the score has improved for Lionheart. Risotto is sending in more artillery, though, so uh, it stays... Ooh. <laughs> this game stays interesting. Let's see villager numbers. 31 to 48. Okay, that's, of course, brutal. We don't have a dock yet from any player. Should see one, though, at some point, I think, because it just it's, it's on this map. Um, it's taking one side, even, can give you a big advantage. Oh my god. Please don't. <laughs> One dead will. Oh. How did that survive? <laughs> That's 7 HP. Yeah. I mean, you sometimes hear these stories that, for example, a US Marine got shot in... Uh, 13 times and still survive without any lasting issues or something but come on that guy just took three cannonballs to the leg you can't tell me he's still an adventurer but apparently he is or they are i don't know and i think at this point both players are freaked out a bit sounds weird because obviously risotto has score lead and is ahead in the game but at the same time i think all of the fights that we saw after um, the, the initial engagements over here and the spa he wastes. I think all of those fights went actually a little bit better for Ottoman, if I'm not if I'm not entirely mistaken, that is. Let's quickly check what Risotto sees in this situation because that's that's now yeah he's drag boxing, he's drag boxing all of it, and now oh god. This will be so awkward. Kalf dodge. That's a good dodge. What are my targets? Artillery on the field. Uh, now it's just... It's just artillery back and forth. It's this back and forth between the two masters. Oh. Yes. What is your command? Orders? And now a 7 HP guy still alive. However the hell that works. Oh, yeah. What the, are my ready to fire? yeah, those guys are all in firing mode. So they're all a bit lower right so you see that the entire army is being slowed down but now risotto finally gets his mind together and uh, gets the car and cavalry out there and just while i say it he does another drag box and then he gets out of it again and another drag box and yeah doesn't matter too much though lionheart he's heart pressed he's still on calves he is now pushing for the base straight as he's losing his lower tc here with 16 bills so i think he wants to make something happen wants to make sure that he Whatever has been taken from him over here 
that he can pay it back in kind. I mean, that's 16 bills for an Ottoman player that is not in the spot where he wants to be right now. 40 bills for 51. So any... Oh, Jesus. If this TC goes down, it leaves him with 16 villages. Uh, 24 villages. That means he would need to kill... Oh. That means he needs to kill 28 villages from the USA player. I, I don't know he can do that. 52 to... Yeah, 25. Look at that. I mean, it's it's honestly, it's a great it's great awareness from uh, Risotto. He's playing it safe and sound here because he knows that with his army composition, as weird as that sounds, he is mostly focused on the goons, skirms, and on his Gatling guns. And those guys are all much, much, much more mobile than everything that uh, Risotto, uh, Leinhardt can put in the field right now. Meaning that his winning condition here was, yeah, I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to make sure that Leinhardt can't catch me. And that's it. Lionheart saw that it was down there. If he went down there, he wasn't sure he could take the fight, right? Oh, God. Step out. Speaking about taking the fight. The Calf Micro is upon us again. And, yeah. It's just, as I said before, it feels like Lionheart is more consistent with his Calf Micro. Now the Gatling Gun's coming forward, and they are going to... Oh, no. There goes our veteran. He could... He could fit three cannonballs in that poor, poor body, but he couldn't take the fourth one. Uh, and honestly, the cannon's actually doing a pretty good job at keeping the veteran carbines also at bay, because those guys alone can be a menace. But the splash damage and all that. Oh, one more shot. Yeah, it's a shame that I... I think the liner does not have this online anymore, but if we could see from his perspective, it would surely be a great thing to watch. Oh, but now the fight is there. Chop Golan, not for tanking, but for engaging the carbine, gen uh, the veteran genissaries, and the artillery is shooting, but in the cave, and there's more cave, and now the infantry mass has bled out. There's only cannons on the field now, and they are just going to get slaughtered from all sides. Risotto coming in with a costly fight for sure, but at the same time, a wonderful surround and Lionheart is probably after this he must be dead in a ditch I think because look at that there's this just complete cleanup cost efficiently I don't know honestly with the shipment and all that being forced right into that army but we've got 52 villages against 27 and I just don't see Lionheart coming back from this one Carl's being, yeah, he tries to retreat them, but there's no chance in hell that he's going to get anything out of it. And there comes the coward wagon. Now, Zotto knows he has taken down the big man, the Brit himself. Lionard has been bamboozled and caught out, caught off guard. They're not caught off guard, but just heavily outmasked. And finally, Risotto find, found him in the right spot to rain down fire upon him from all sides. It, it really, it took him a long time in the sense of it was really Lionheart fought like a literal line here, taking shots left and right, really microing his artillery and making sure that wherever, whenever Lion uh, Risotto was trying to peek, could get a shot off and could get damage in and all that. But where do we go from here? Another TC being added? Yeah, for sure. But I mean, 28 villages. Some Jans, some Mamluks. I... I I mean, mams are great and all. Don't get me wrong. As I said before, that's 6,000 HP right there. Uh, <laughs> without the range resist calculated in. But your enemy has doubled your economy. Um, your unit opinion? ops basically are all through all the most important ones. Ah, well, never mind. No unit ops, actually. But <laughs> Risotto is cheekingly going for H4. Lionheart on the other side. He is investing in more army... He He's actually, is, he is chasing the US Army. How does that work? If I might ask. Mamluks just tanking all the damage. And those sharps just being... T I mean, the score, of course, is not calculating that there's uh, about 4,000 resources now in the age of Horizonte, but look at that. 
Those brave Janissaries taking a head-on fight against Carbine Cavalry. Oh. I mean, they might be outnumbered, but those boys are sure proud. On the other side, we see Mams trying to go for a sneaky raid, but it's not really sneaky if you have to. Try to think about it as getting mugged, and the mugger has to go around the fence. That is a see-through fence right in front of you for 15 meters, and then come all the back round to stand in front of you and demand your money, right? It's not that scary anymore, is it? What is your, what is your command? command? I mean, water is something that Rizzotti is not really too keen on right now. He is on water, just a teeny tiny bit, but we see almost no anti-water from Lionheart. That is something that confuses me a bit. I think he wanted to fake out with the schooners, probably. Gunas have been debated to be, at least from some players, have been debated to be a bit useless nowadays just because fishing boats are already pretty darn cheap. Of course. Yeah, and look at that. That's H4 coming through right there. XP being gathered up. And now, Lionheart again finds himself in a spot where he may be a bit of more than he can chew. Has to retreat through the woods. Of course, good for, good for him. Good for the pathing against him. Or well, not so good for the guy who's pathing against him, but... More reinforcing Avis. Lionheart is still hanging on. Jesus. What are my targets? I mean, if he streamed that, he, he was probably cursing throughout the entire game or something. But I mean, you can't can't tell me that he was sitting there with a the stone face. Uh, <laughs> the stone wall face and, you know, just act like nothing was happening on screen. Oh, Jesus. What a slaughter. At the same time, I mean, water boom is coming here. Villagers migrating. He is decimating the entire US army. And now he's even saving that to Mams. I mean, how do you even? How did... I mean, how is Lionheart still in this game? If I might ask. We are on 60 villagers. That's basically... Are we on natural resources still? Or are we not? Oh my god. I'm glad I saw that in time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's all I would say there. Let's just... Leave Risotto's word to stand for his actions there. <laughs> Jesus. And that TC, obviously, I, I don't think that... That is going to go down, isn't it? It is actually going to go down here. Water is not contested, but Lionheart somehow is keeping the Lionheart dream alive. Villagers evacuating here towards the water. Great move. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think Risotto just fell victim to uh, a new mechanic, basically. Namely that the fishing boats always go for resources if they are idle. Oh, now he's again being raided here. Fighting on all sides, trying to stay on the natural resources, but we are at minute 32. And we are running thin on everything. If you look at it, Lionheart has one last mine over here. That mine to the right is probably the reason why he's fighting all of this. And oh my god, <laughs> there are the heavy cannons. And those guys, yeah, I, I don't expect any of the Avis here to, to walk out of this alive. Luckily for them, I'm really bad at predictions, it seems. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Town center over here, water over here as well. So uh, 38 villages to 67. Hello. 15 villages by now. <laughs> yes. Seven of them yes. Yes. Hello. are now yes, officially sir. pirates. They belong to the sea now, right? Uh, the ship needs a captain. What else can I say? And those guard, by the way, by now guard cowboy and cavalry units. They have seen a lot in their in their line of duty, in their time of duty, especially. And I just can't get the, the voice of Morgan Black out of my head saying, <laughs> talking about, bring the hoop throwers, right? They know how to deal with the Turks. Because I'm sorry, but those Caravan Cavalry certainly do not know how to deal with the Turks here. Ottoman army is actually improving. Now we've got calves in the field because he knows he needs to deal with that. Lionheart is in absolute try harvest mode right here. <laughs> Gods. 
8k score lead though for, for USA. I don't know if Risotto knows what he's about to do or what he's supposed to do, right? Rather, because how do you fight this heads on if, if you don't win the artillery fights? I mean, don't have a lot of mass there. You've got a lot of economy, I give you that. Oh, and those wills, those wills are gonna die, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Deleting that before it gets taken down is a smart choice. And he's now just sniping villagers in the water. Wait. Oh, wait a second. Did we... We didn't miss it, I hope. Yes. Nah, I don't think we missed it. I will check with you later. If you're not... If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have to check with you later on. Whether or not he evacuated those villages at some point, you know, the seven villages was earlier. I think it was probably those guys over here, right? Could have been. Or if they got shot down in the boat that just left the coast right there. How can you still put that much pressure on the guy who's 8k score ahead? I don't fully understand that, to be honest. I do not fully understand that. Uh -uh. He knows the army's coming now. And it's good because it's villagers. That means his villagers are not going to get slaughtered. But they need to move, you know. They certainly need to, you know, uh, summon the inner widget and move a ringer the fuck out of here. Because that is... <laughs> Jesus. If they get caught up, that's, that's it then. 75 villagers to 45. And we are vill kept again. Uh, I just reckon that uh, the church techs are not... Oh, can you get the shot off? No, he can't. Oh, Jesus. Imagine if he had gotten that shot. Back, back, back. Oh, that's, that's so strong because those those heavy cannons are gonna gonna bite the dust, I feel like. Look at that. Perfectly. Spotted there. And that's the second heavy cannon. And some the F how Lionheart continues to beat the USA's ass in this game. And I don't fully understand how. He is now going for a dock himself because he wants to take over water. He is good the upgrades. Uh, we have to look at the villager uh, villager curve after this for both players because I want to know if we just missed the biggest raid on water ever. And, or if, for how long, Lionheart has been housed here. That, that, I, I want to see that. I will need that information to, to you know, find peace. Ah. I think those boys have seen it, though. I'm pretty sure they're not going to come out of here alive. Yeah, that's it for them. Lionheart now on three TCs, by the way. And, actually, building... Gelly. He has put his dock over there and he is trying to, he will try to take out water. More outposts. He is actively reinforcing his position here. Does not want to give USA any part of the map. And USA now, I mean, they have it much cheaper to actually transition to those resource buildings. But, uh, don't forget, we finished game one and two in the same time that he's taking us here to not die to Risotto's USA. <laughs> so, Lionheart is clinging on. Yes, Hello. yes. Orders, I'll do it. Oh my god, but that fight, look at that, what's coming in now? Kovac's Legion. The Magia Hussars. The guys that ended it as well in the last game. Coming in from Izoto. And honestly, with that mass of sharpshooters behind it, that might that might just be it. anti cab is on the field, being ready for the big fight. Do we have Minutemen? Yeah, the, the cooldown was just there. But is he going to send it forward? I'm pretty sure he is. He is now engaging. Yep. Here they come. And there they are. Magia Hussars right in your face. And that's a fight even Lionheart can't out-micro, I think. In this situation, he is getting slaughtered, being drawn about a 
across the battlefield on all sides. Kev moving out, forcing the engaged melee units to, to follow them and being shot at by the sharpshooters, the carbine Kev. Just about everything here on the field is now killing Janissaries. And the last of them fall after a long, proud battle. Uh, because it's not even just the battle. I mean, that was that was pretty much an entire campaign of fights. One fight after the other. But it looks like this time the fight doesn't stop. I, it seems like the fight doesn't stop in, in uh, Stalingrad. It just stops in Scandinavia. The watery depths of the north were just not able to be conquered by the Turks. And for some probably natural related reason. A bit clumsily but still well defended by the US. Oh. At some point we have to open up a Wikipedia entry for just fake fiction. That's happening in the Age of Empires universe here. But yeah, look at that. I mean, that's he's, he's trying to desperately switch to Delhi now to kind of get something against the the Kev, but I don't think it's going to work. He's, he's got most of his, his villages over here, I reckon. 67 villages to 58. However the hell, Lionheart pulled that number. <laughs> and there's outposts everywhere, so he's going to make it as expensive as possible. For Risotto to actually take these fights. Because don't forget, those things do extra damage against Kev. Any Kev, that is. Yeah, and that water is clean. That water is clean. Risotto is actively losing map control. But Lionheart is, has lost his entire military. And now the question is how much time does it take that skirm goon combination to actively and actually siege down the, the, the Ottoman base? Christ. Now we got it. Yeah, we got a ranger, a sloop on that side. We got some ships on the other side, I reckon. Got to. Yeah, nothing there. Sending in 10 carbine cavalry. In fact, they can even afford that. <laughs> 69 to 58 villagers, but it doesn't matter. He has now. I think he has all the, the spawning upgrades for his villagers. So look at that. That's. On care, pretty much 180 damage uh, uh, being put upon them over there. And reinforcing batches coming in, of course. Those towers still put pressure on the water economy of USA, but Lionheart is just... Uh, he, he fought for it. He fought well and valiantly, but I think it's just... It is coming to an end. USA is taking revenge, and... Uh, it is a brutal one, honestly. They are not going to stop until the last burning with an Ottoman flag here <laughs> in Scandinavia has been burnt to the ground, I reckon. This covered wagon just waiting for another accident like the one we saw before. But yeah, I think at this point, Risotto now, yeah, he's now getting his H4 upgrades for how it's a guard shop shooter, so he has been pretty preoccupied with a lot of other stuff going on. Hello. He is still losing water. He lost the entirety of water. Uh, because he's so f focused on land now. I reckon. But, uh, of course he is taking land. That's that's nothing you can argue about. 11 villagers sitting in that TC. More villagers dying down here. Water being completely clean of course. But with the howitzers I think there's no space anywhere here. That can't be contested just with the use of howitzers. Uh, and now they're trying to evacuate but of course I don't think any of them are going to make it out alive ah uh, well maybe again I was a bit too too quick with my assumption here those guys certainly do look like they're able to make it out of there and I think we're going to see Lionheart evacuating <laughs> over here to the last last Turkish resort here this, this small Ottoman retreat <laughs> right in line of sight of Lionheart just just to make sure that you don't think he forgot about it but he's he's just so preoccupied with everything on the map and with not losing this game it sounds arrogant from my side but that's what he's been doing trying to not lose the game uh <laughs> for the last 
43 minutes now. For the last 30 at least. But now I think he has it in such a strong iron grip that he's not going to... Lionheart is not going to be able to pry that grip open. That Lionheart uh, that, that Risotto has. On the price that is this last game. And effectively the one point mate in this series. So kudos to Risotto to pulling something off like this after. And just, just casting this took three hours and 50 minutes so far. So, uh, you get a bit of perspective if you think about that those players had to agree on matchups first and do all this stuff around this, and that's not a pause, trust me. That's not making it easier for anybody. Lionheart on the other side. Oh my god. He just petarded at the enemy's base away. <laughs> uh, is he trying to age? What is he trying to achieve here? Because he's just walling himself in now with, with all his 70 villages? However the hell that works. We almost have a vill lead now for Ottoman, actually. Could try some TP hopping now, as uh, some, some uh, outpost hopping, I reckon. Outpost, outpost, more out. He's actually going to go for H4. Resort on the other hand is shipping in four calves. Do we see any mortars anywhere, everywhere? Yeah, there's a howitzer. More on the field? Not yet. But at least that thing is there because that is going to make it all so much easier. Yeah, you see, that thing is just going to get cleaned up. And take down houses, buildings, everything. Wheels are going to take, yeah, they are being taken down. Boy, oh yes. boy, covered wagons there as well. And now the slow but deadly push begins. I mean, it has taken him a long time. It was a hard fight. Rizotto really, really needed to work for it here because uh, he lost, I think, almost every engagement. Every of the bigger engagements until he finally got that one good fight under his TC, which was very well timed. And then he actually needed the second good fight. So it was the, the cap shipments twice, actually, that saved the game for him. Which sounds really weird if you think about it. What is your Abe was coming out as yes. counter artillery, I reckon. Let's see what we're going to get out of this, though. And what is it that uh, you get with the Grand Vizier? Oh my god, three spar here. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is the right unit. Because <laughs> those guys are actually going to take care of all the other infantry units here on the field. <laughs> oh man. Still getting cleaned off the map entirely. But it doesn't matter. Lionheart keeps on fighting this. And it looks like, yeah, now he's finally housed after... Half, no, his entire starting base has been torn down. Lionheart can no longer support any extra military. And I think, I think, well, I mean, we have been seeing this game go on for 45 minutes. So we probably got to see it for a bit longer. I, he has to recognize that there is no way they can hold this just with water. He's sending a factory now. Yes, another TC in his base. So he's walling up, he's gearing up, he's just playing this as defensively as he can. But we see calves on the field, and those calves are at least going to deny water on this side. Now he's on the dock, and we might actually see... Uh, yeah, we could actually see a battleship from Oldenburg coming out here. There's two docks actually going up. Jesus. So... It's like, basically now, this has turned from an all-out field battle, all over the place, guerrilla tactics, as far as you can see, and all that, into just uh, a siege. One last hold of the Ottoman outpost over here. Risotto is now, for some reason, actually going for circular saw. And for royal calves. Five years after. But... <laughs> well, 
again that's just due to the fact that they have been playing for over three hours with uh, what was incredibly demanding performance not just in this game but in all of those before right if you remember the one uh mexico versus hot and so on so they've been really giving it their all and that is spa a sipahi raid 80 villagers against 58 so okay villager numbers are now finally being closed out there's two great bombards just defending this is the Ottoman version. Right there, that's the Ottoman version of, of Malta. Maltese defensive playstyle, I reckon. Uzoto has an Iron Claw now. Actively, actually built one of those guys. And then forget that thing has a, a rechargeable loadup animation. Uh, no, loadup animation. A rechargeable far range attack that can actually. Oh! Lionel wanted to fight it, but. There was a trap. And I think that that Harry Iron Claw is going to just basically those two unit groups can defend each other pretty well, I think. Yeah. Oh, calves out though. Oh, just in time, just in the nick of time there. Otherwise, that 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 ship would have been toast. But I think if Risotto is not able to, yeah, he, he might still lose it. Never mind. <laughs> That was the single best moment uh, to actually get the shots out on that on that Kalfmaster. He just took two for the price of one. Not just efficiently, but very, very beautiful at the same time. Is it? It's a. Where the hell do you just use that scientific? Yeah, where is that hot air balloon? I'm sorry. Why would you use that over... What? Oh. That's not a question that any longer. But yeah, the factory is going down. Lionheart trying his very, very best to, to keep anything in here alive. But the combined force of a frigate and a heavy iron claw, that factory is just as doomed as the German factories were in the last game. And this, excuse the comparison that I'm making right now, but this feels like the longest I've ever watched somebody try to suffocate an elder person with, with a cushion, you know what I mean? There is a struggle, but it should be really easy, but it turned out to be much harder than it needed to be. Excuse me for the very grim picture here, but yeah. To be fair, if we, if we use a comparison, then the elder that was supposed to be suffocated kicked you in the nuts a few times pretty hard. That is, that is fair. Because the fights that, that Lionheart took, they were really impressive for, for the material that he had to work with. Uh, yeah, but those great bombards are yeah, a piece of meat now and there they get taken down. I don't know where the how it says though. Those two guys could have, you know... Done a lot of the work that is necessary in this fight. And those guys, that's still Vet Gen, right? But they tank just an amazing amount of damage right there. And if this continues, there will be more of Risotto's army in Lionheart's base than there is, well, anything of Lionheart on the map, I guess. Yeah, now he's just brute forcing it with skirms. He, he, he has had enough. And that's the last heavy cannon going down. We actually still see frontier outposts, but even those guys are not going to be enough to save this situation. All of Lionheart's economy is here, right here, basically. And a bit of that over there. Oh, that doesn't count too much. Another scientific exploration, for whatever reason. I think he just wants to make sure that Lionheart is not... Oh yeah, there we go. Hot air balloon. He just wants to see what's coming for him, I reckon. Yeah, just even... <laughs> um, Turkey, I guess he meant Turtling there, but... Might also be a I'm Turk's defensive place. So I don't know, I don't care, because that was one hell of a game. A bit long in the, in the end, probably, but... I mean, the beginning to mid, 
Lionheart was sweating his ass off and Risotto probably too because he saw that the fights were not going too well for him. In military now, now, look at that, it's still not even after all of that fighting that Lionheart did on the back foot. And I'm talking about after he lost the second big fight. Economic comparison, we don't need to make that one. Resources, that's clear, that's clear. XP, yeah. Villager population. First of all, Lionheart here. That's the one. That's the one that got taken down and put him down all the way. That's the TC where I said, okay, that was perfectly calculated by Risotto. By the way, actually, I think he actually took down the boat or he took down the bills on land, but just cheeky. <laughs> yeah, just economic numbers were not looking that great, but now let's go for military unit comparison. Risotto going down all the way from one. Look at that. It took all of that to make a good fight happen for Risotto. 190 to 74. 190 population to 74. And barely came out on top. With reinforcements in base. And then, ah, look at that. Got cut down, got cut down. Lionel had the bigger mass here. And then he got caught out by the Magyars again. And that's that's the end of it. He actually, I think Lionheart, even after that, could still have won the game, probably. Which is insane if you think about it, but I think insane is what describes this game, this ending game of this series of seven best. Now let's quickly get back <laughs> into the post-match screen. And uh, wrap things up, shall we? The risotto was out there with USA versus Lionheart's Ottoman. Four to three for Lionheart versus risotto. Insane match. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty done myself, honestly, after this. Give me a second, I will quickly look up the score so you guys know what you can expect. So what this actual standing is, because this is the second to last game. There's one more cast that's coming up soon. Um, and that will tell you what the outcome of this whole scenario was, right? Uh, just give me a second to look it up and I will be right with you again. Here I am again. Thank you for the wait. Um, after a short pause, what I did in the meantime is actually I put together all the numbers and crunched my old dusty brain. Make sure to give you the correct results. After this, 4-2-3, close, close victory for the semi-FF game by Risotto against Lionheart of the Gajonians. We are actually at 13 points for the semi-FF game and 15 points for the Gajonians. That means only two points score difference. And that gives Gibson, aka P is stored in balls, that I'm not going to question that name, uh, versus Nick, the last match in the series, all the chances to put it either way. So, be up next when that wreck comes up to YouTube. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this cast. Let me know below in the comments. And that's it from my side. MFT is signing off. Thanks you all for your support, guys.